Hey, we're here at Rochester High School this afternoon. I've got Coach Kelly and B.J. Barnes with me. You've seen B.J. He's uh, been doing a lot of stuff with us over the summer and interning with us here this fall. And uh, Coach, it's been a couple weeks since we got a chance to talk. You guys have had a, a good little uh, run here the last few weeks. You got the win over at Whitco, and then you got the homecoming win here against Manchester. Tell us you know, how things have been going the last few weeks for you. Well, I think they've... Uh been going pretty well as far as I think we're improving each week. Uh, we've got our running game going pretty well right now. Uh, we ended up rushing for over four, around 400 yards last week, so uh, we didn't put the ball in the air much. But uh, when you're having that much success, eight yards of carry on the ground, we're probably not going to put it up that much. But we're going to take what the defense gives us. So uh, uh, yeah, I've been proud of the kids. They've d worked their butts off. Uh, the defense gave up seven points at Whitco and uh, 13 at Manchester. If we can keep that up, uh, uh, we're going to be success successful. <clears throat> well, BJ, uh, been putting together some clips off of the highlights that we've gotten from uh, our producer Jeremy there at Rochester, and I've been noticing number 27 in a lot of those. Uh, you've been a lot, uh, been kind of all over the field there defensively, especially. I, I saw some nice plays you had. Uh, the Knox game, guys came up a little bit short in that game, but uh, you guys played Knox really well. So talk a little bit about how your senior season is going so far. Um, you know, it's going great. You know, uh, it's finally nice, you know, uh, you know, getting an independent look. You know, the seniors last year were just great athletes. You know, I can't say anything wrong about them, just great athletes all around. But right now, you know, it's kind of about us, you know, the upcoming seniors. And without their help, you know, things are looking to be a lot more independent. You know, you have to take on a lot more responsibility, and it's nice. Well, I've really enjoyed watching you guys, you know, getting to know you and, and Bryce and uh, Isaiah, who's also interning with us, and, and watching you guys going out there and perform. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Isaiah and I just like to make up any video that kind kind of comes to our minds, you know, whether it be sports related or just something going around the school. We like to capture that. Well, Coach, it's the the Bell Week, so you got Tippecanoe Valley coming over here on uh, Friday. They've been doing pretty good themselves this year. Uh, you know, last year that was a huge matchup. Obviously, it's always a huge matchup against Valley, but uh, you guys went over there and fell a little short last year. So, talk about you know this week, what this week, what this game means to Rochester and uh, the, the entire community, really. Well, if uh, you look at them on the film, they're pretty much you're going to see two teams that are a lot alike uh, this week. Uh, we both run a lot of the same stuff. Uh, they have a quarterback that can run. We have a quarterback that can run and throw. Uh, so they have some nice running backs. Uh, they run the, the s similar stuff that we do, really very similar in what they do and what we do on the field. So it's just going to be a team that can come and play the hardest and execute the best that's going to come out on top. Coach Kelly, um, really impressed with your backfield this year, obviously with two seniors, you know, Bryce and Isaiah. But Bryce Abbott has been running like, you know, you haven't seen anything like that for a while. He just runs that ball, and you know that he's going to get positive yards on every attempt. But he's been, uh, he's been getting more than just positive yards. He's been racking up 8 to 10 probably per, per rush. Well, he's – He's gotten a lot quicker this year. I mean, last year he had a little extra weight on that he didn't need. This summer he worked really hard to get his weight down and, uh, and improve his quickness and speed, and he has done that. So now when he breaks the line, it becomes a 33-yard carry rather than a 15-yard carry because he has more speed and more quickness than he had last year. Uh, just this, on that other note, our backs are running really well, but uh, we've had some other parts of the team that are really playing well lately also. Our offensive line has been blocking very well, uh, those kids up front. Our defensive secondary doesn't give the other team hardly anything passing. Now, we, uh, we, give up, we gave up a long play last week, mm -hmm. okay, and that's, that's one play, but for the most part, our secondary has been very good rather than we've gave up two or three long plays but for the most part, our secondaries has shut the other team's passing game down. So. Well, we're, uh, we're looking forward to an uh, exciting game on Friday. We got uh, Rochester hosting Tippecanoe Valley for the Bell. 
and uh, should be a real exciting game. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. on Friday. You can watch all of the action on Rochester TV here on RTC TV4. All right, we are here live at Barnhart Field, and you're watching RTC TV4. Uh, we are going to go ahead and join uh, Giant FM Radio here with their broadcast. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Stay healthy. And, uh, compete for that title coming down here the last few weeks. Okay, again, tell me, what do you got to do to win? Uh, I think we got to hold on to the ball. Okay, we've got to uh, be able to, I think, use our offense as a, some defense mm -hmm. as far as, you know, we, we like to put together some long drives, control the, the clock and the game. Uh, but like I said, I think it's going to be a team that controls the line of scrimmage, the team that out hits, out tack, tackles the best, uh, and takes care of the ball. Okay. So. Sean, I appreciate your time. Good luck. We'll talk to you after the game. Thank you. Zebra head coach Sean Kelly, Sean, interview tonight brought to you by the Insulation Guys LLC, your hometown certified insulation service provider. Back with more of the Rochester Lincoln, uh, Ford Lincoln pregame show next. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. Lincoln is the proud supporter of uh, the pregame show tonight. Rochester Ford Lincoln, 119 East 4th Street, Rochester. They are the home of the free lifetime oil change with every vehicle sold. A fantastic showing tonight for both teams. Yeah, both bleachers are full and uh, line in the fence. This is probably the uh, most anticipated game and biggest crowd I've seen here since 2007. Time real quick for the uh, Woodlawn Hospital injury report. You heard Coach Kelly say in the pregame, Everyone we have, knock on wood, healthy. Great. That's fantastic news. The injury report brought to you by Woodland Hospital, where quality and compassion meet. Both teams at the middle of the field. Uh, Tipping New Valley won the toss. They have elected to defer to the second half, which means Rochester's offense will be on the for, uh, field first. Well, and let's hope that they can uh, put together a good drive and, and get on the board first. I think that is uh, obviously the goal, but that will go a long way yeah. in setting the tone for this football game. That's going to wrap up the Rochester Ford Lincoln pregame show here on WROI Giant FM Sports. Again, Rochester Ford Lincoln, home of the free lifetime oil change with every vehicle sold. Again, beautiful night for football here at Rochester High School if it were early August. <laughs> right. It is mid-September and it's 84 degrees, zero wind, but the field looks fantastic and the crowd is amazing. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere for football tonight. The Rochester Zebras in their home blacks, black pants, black jerseys, gold numbers, black helmets. The Tippecanoe New Valley Vikings in their road whites, white pants, white jerseys, green numbers, yellow helmets. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. We are ready to go with this one here, week five of the high school football season. And I asked you before we went on the air here, Brad, about other key matchups in the conference. And um, this one is the keyest. This, this is the premier game this evening in the TRC. Um, this will go a long way in helping helping to decide the TRC champion, but there are still four oh four very tough weeks ahead. Uh, you and Coach Kelly touched on that in the interview, but uh, you know Southwood is still undefeated. 
Both of these teams still have to play Southwood. McConaughey's only got one loss in the conference, yeah. and that is to Southwood. And both of these teams still have to play McConaughey. Yeah, so exactly right. even the loser of this game tonight still has a chance to control their own destiny. Xavier Smith, Gary and Tarrant, and Lane and Kelly back deep to receive the kick. Smith is going to get it at the 10. Bobbles, Bobbles it, it, picks it up at the 11. Smith up right up the middle of the field and is spun down just shy of the 25-yard line. A pretty good return after the bobble on the kickoff. And it looks like Rochester will start their first series of the game at about the 24-yard line. You know, that's something that uh, we touched on, something that Coach Kelly touched on, is the turnovers. Rochester's had at least two in every single game. And, you know, as, as well as they played against Knox with the chance to win, they had four fumbles in that ball game. That kickoff brought to you by the Insulation Guys LLC, your hometown certified insulation service provider. B.J. Barnes comes wide to the near side. Flanker to the right side is Kelly. Split backs for Nick Allen. Takes the snap, pitches out to Abbott. Bryce Abbott right up the middle, runs over a defender. Crosses a 30 to around the 31-yard line. Great. He just oh. bulls <laughs> over a linebacker of Tippecanoe New Valley and takes it out to the 32. That's about a stereotypical run by Bryce Abbott, as you are going to see, as it almost appears that he seeks out somebody to run <laughs> over. Give him nine. It'll be second down and one for the Zebras. Ball in the near hash, which is the Rochester sideline. Rochester going to the east. Same formation. Short side of the field. Same play, pitch out to Abbott, lowers his head. He's got a first down. First down brought to you by Woodlawn Hospital, where quality and compassion meet. Again, Abbott running over white jerseys. He bowls his way out to about the 38-yard line. Nice hard run for Bryce Abbott. He's got two carries and a first down for the Zebras as this ball is going to be spotted right at the 37 on the near hash. And would you be surprised if uh, we did the same thing this play? <laughs> well, yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to. B.J. Barnes will be wide to the near side. A flanker to the right is Isaiah Jackson. Flanker to the left is Kelly. Bryce Abbott, the lone back. Kelly comes in motion to the near side. Here's the, a handoff to Abbott right up the middle. Bryce Abbott crosses the 40. Down to around the 42. He's going to pick up about five. It'll be second down and five for the Zebras. Abbott going the other direction to the left side of that offensive line this time for Rochester. And again, that offensive line for Rochester Dylan Weaver, Braden Pinder, Noah Swango, Marshall Fishback, and Ethan Daywald. Right now, those five young men are doing a tremendous job up front. B.J. Barnes goes wide to the left side. Tight left is Yarber. Same formation. Kelly goes in motion out of the Valley sideline. He gets the pitch going left with blockers in front of him. Kelly looking for the outside. Cuts it back inside. And he's going to be stood up shy of the 45-yard line. Probably uh, the mark on this side is about the 44. So give him two. It'll be third down. Uh, third down and about uh, two for the Rochester Zebras. We'll say third and three for the Zebras. I kind of felt early today thinking about this football game that if Rochester was going to win this game, they were going to have to be successful throwing the football. And I didn't think that Nick Allen was going to have to throw for over 100 yards, but I did think he was going to have to hit some key passes on yeah. third down and maybe second and long. Isaiah Jackson dots the eye on third and three from the 44. Jackson gets the pitch, cuts it inside the blocker. And Jackson lunges short. ahead of the 45. He's going to be short for, by about two yards. It'll bring up fourth down and two from the Rochester 45-yard line. And it looks like Coach Kelly's going to send on the punting unit. So Rochester stalls out after a good first uh, series of plays. And it looks like Bryce Abbott will kick this one away. How confident do you feel <coughs> in your defense that you might risk a fake punt here no, uh, this early uh, in the football I game. I don't believe And Valley's not convinced that uh, <laughs> we're going to punt. Now they are. Now they They're going to send uh, Jalen back. Potter back deep to receive this kick. Bryce Abbott stands inside his 35-yard line to kick this one away. Potter back to receive it. Gets it away. Low line drive kick. Takes a Rochester bounce. Bounces inside the 20-yard line. And it will come to rest at about the 14. So Tipping New Valley will start their first series of the game at their own 14-yard line. Going to our left, no score with 8.52 to play in the first quarter. Kind of an ugly punt, but an effective punt yeah. by Bryce Abbott. It didn't get more than about 10 feet off the ground, but it did roll a good 20, 25 yards. First and 10 for the Tipping New Valley Vikings. Ball in the far hash here at Rochester High School. Battle for the Bell 2019. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. 8.52 to play in the first quarter. Tanner Torpedi is your quarterback. He is a 5'9", 155-pound senior. And he is the spark to the motor that is their offense. He's in the pistol formation. 
Trapiti takes a snap, and he hands off to the running back who was met by the Zebra defense in the backfield, and Conley's pushed backwards by a yard. It'll Ethan, be second and a... Ethan Daywald in the backfield for Rochester. Uh, tipping New Valley will lose a yard. It'll be second down and 11. Yeah, Daywald uh, blew up the line of scrimmage there and was in the backfield about as quick as the ball was. Davis comes wide to the near side. Also wide to the near side is Jacob Davis. High backs for Torpedi, who's under center. Pitches out to Conley. Conley's met by Abbott, and we're going to have a flag on the play before the uh, the play even gets going, and it's going to be a yes, false start so. on the, the uh, Vikings. So the back him up five more. It'll be, bring up second down and 16. That's going to put them inside the Zebra's 10-yard line. Yeah. And again, Bryce Abbott blows things up in the yeah. uh, uh, up front and Blitz, is in the backfield with Blitzing the, linebacker. Yep. yep. So now the ball is spotted at the eight-yard line. 8-10 to play in the first quarter. The Vikings looking at second down and 16. Davis comes wide to the near side. Out of the pistol now is Trapiti. Back to pass. Looks right, throws right. He's got a receiver. He's picked off. It. B.J. Barnes picks off the pass at the 16-yard line, and the Zebras will take over after the Valley turnover. Fantastic job by B.J. Barnes. He read that pass perfectly. Trapiti woefully underthrew his receiver, and Barnes was there to make the interception. You've got to almost wonder, Brad, if there was a mix-up there as the receiver yeah. saw one thing and Trapiti saw another. It's like Trapiti thought he was going to do a, a, a hook and curl, and, and the receiver thought he was going long. Yeah. First and 10 for the Zebras. Gary and Tarrant come wide to the near side. Abbott is a flanker to the left side. Make that tight end to the left side. Yarber is tight right. Out of the pistol is Allen on the option. Nick Allen fakes, keeps. Around the right side, brought down inside the 15-yard line. And they're going to mark that at about the 12, so give him four. It'll be second down and six. That's something we haven't seen yet this year. The option, yeah. Out of the pistol. Right. Isaiah Jackson comes in the game. Gary and Tarrant comes out, or comes in, I should say. Jackson comes out. Right. Seven and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. No score. Zebras. In the red zone, brought to you by Evans Agency, helping you with your insurance needs today and tomorrow. Split backs for Nick Allen. Flanker to the left is Kelly. Allen takes a snap, hands off to Abbott going left. Bryce Abbott shakes off one tackler, spins away from another, carries it inside the 10 to the 9. Another three yards for Abbott. It'll be third and three for the Zebras at the Tippecanoe New Valley 9-yard line. Ball in the far hash, ah, we're going to say ball in the middle of the field. Isaiah Jack comes, Jackson comes back in. Gary and Tarrant comes out. Brad Thomas, I'm David Muscle. The Zebras third and three at the New Valley nine-yard line. Well within Matt Sha or, uh, yep. Schaefer's field goal range right now. B.J. Barnes comes wide to the near side. A flanker to the right is Jackson. To the left is Kelly. Lone back is Abbott. Jackson goes in motion left. Here's a snap. Pitches out to Jackson going left. Cuts it back inside. He's grabbed from behind, spun goal. down. It's going to be close. And gets really close to the line again. I believe he's going to be shy. And I think he's going to pick up two. It'll be fourth down and about one for the Zebras at around the Vikings' seven-yard line. Right now, both defenses playing really well. The Vikings backed up against their goal line. Rochester will keep their offense on the field. It'll be fourth and one for Rochester at the Vikings' seven-yard line. Ball in the far hash, which is the uh, Tippecanoe New Valley sideline. Noah Swango on the ball first. He is the center. Yarber is tight right. B.J. Barnes tight left. Full house backfield for Rochester. Valley with all the big boys up front between the tackles. Jackson comes in motion to the near side. Here's the snap. Hand off to Abbott. Abbott. Abbott's got a first down as he crosses inside the five to the four. That's going to be enough for a first down, new fresh uh, set of downs. And this first down brought to you tonight by Woodlawn Hospital, where quality and compassion meet. First and goal for the Zebras. First and goal at the four for the Zebras. No score here at Rochester with 540 to play in the first quarter. Nick Allen brings a play in from the sideline. Rochester breaks the huddle with 20 on the play clock. B.J. Barnes and Landon Kelly come wide to the near side. Jackson dots the eye. Yarber is tight right. First and goal from the four. Nick Allen under center. Takes a snap from Swango. Fakes the handoff. Quarterback keeper around the near side. Allen looking to outrun the defense to the oh. goal line, and he is brought down shy, giving the two. It'll be a pickup of two. It'll be second and goal from the two. Allen trying to outrun the defense to the pylon. Couldn't quite make it. Uh, the chase coming from uh, Dakota Gaff that time for Tippecanoe Valley, and he just uh, 
jumped and grabbed his shoestrings and tackled him. Yeah. It'll be second and goal for the Zebras at the two. Valley a late defensive substitution. They go to a full house backfield. Barnes and Yarber tight. Jackson, Abbott, and Kelly left to right in the backfield. At Jackson gets the carry going right. He's Isaiah in. Jackson looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Zebras! Rochester gets on the board first after the B.J. Barnes interception at the 16-yard line. Isaiah Jackson takes it in from two yards out. Defense leading to offense, as Coach Kelly wanted to see tonight. 4.43 to play in the first quarter. Rochester up 6-0, and Wade Schaefer on to attempt the extra point. Allen is your holder. Snap is back, hold is down, here comes some pressure. Schaefer gets it away, and it is good. 7-0 Rochester. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. This is old you. And this is now you. Five wears his fire hat and coat in the Things change. Your insurance should too. Talk to an Indiana Farm Bureau insurance agent. And now you can stop knocking on wood. On the Manitou Moose Lodge 11 07 scoreboard, Rochester on the board first, Brad 7 0. After a BJ Barnes interception at the 16 yard line, the Zebras went six plays, 16 yards, and uh, capped it with an Isaiah Jackson two yard run following that big fullback Bryce Abbott into the end zone. Scoring drive brought to you tonight by Fulton Roadstar Driving School. Call 574-780-2291 for more information. So the Rochester Zebras will be kicking off to the Tipping New Valley Vikings, now up 7 to nothing. Again, 4.43 to play in the first quarter. Valley on their first possession, minus yards rushing, an interception, and a penalty. Setting up the Zebra score. Oh, good heavens. South. Didn't that game just start, Val? Yeah. Southwood <laughs> over Wabash, 14 to nothing. Wabash's homecoming game. Oh, my. Yeah. They couldn't find another opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Wade Schaefer ready. Valley's return man back at a five yard line. A deep kick. All the way it to the goal one. line. He fumbled it, it into the end zone. And went into the end zone for oh, a touchback. Geez. Great kickoff by Wade Schaefer. And that thing traveled all the way to the one, and it was muffed at the goal line and rolled in the end zone, unfortunately, for Tipping New Valley. So they start this uh, drive at their 20. So the Vikings will start their second series at their 20 yard line. Rochester leading 7 0 here at Rochester High School. Tanner Trapedi in the huddle. The Vikings will break the huddle with 20 on the play clock. Jacob Davis goes wide to the right side. Potter's in the slot left, out of the shotgun now, make that out of the pistol now is Tanner Trapedi. Trapedi takes the snap, high snap over his head. Trapedi slips, falls on it at the five. Make that the 10. The Vikings lose 10 yards, it'll be second down and 20. You talk about miscues early oh, wow. on. Boy, that was... Tippecanoe Valley was lucky to get that football back. Trapedi fell down trying to go back and get the ball. He had to crawl to recover. I wasn't sure he's going to get there. Three zebras closing in on him as he wrapped it up. Second and twenty for the Vikings. Yeah, it's not been a good start for Tippecanoe Valley. Jalen Potter in the slot to the left side. Davis is wide right. Eye backs now for Trapedi. Trapedi takes the snap, pitches out to Conley. Conley met by a bunch of zebras and he goes backwards. Abbott on the stop for Rochester. Conley loses a yard. It'll be third and 21 for the Vikings. 7 0 Rochester, under four minutes to play in the first quarter. Right now, Tippecanoe Miley has a minus 12 rushing yards in this football game. The Zebras are winning the war up front, and that's one of the keys Sean yeah. Kelly told us about in the pregame interview. They have yet to have a, a, a play of positive yardage. Yeah. This Rochester defense is just being nasty. Vikings will have trips to the right side, including Conley. Out of the pistol formation is Trapedi. Trapedi takes Abbott. a snap. Trapedi stops, 
drives, throws. It is going to be incomplete, tipped away by Allen, and the Vikings are going to have to punt. That pass intended yeah. for Jacob Davis, a 165-pound junior. And Abbott was on the run after Trapiti. Trapiti pulled up and just threw it, and uh, Nick Allen almost coming up with the interception as it tipped off his fingers. All right, that was definitely a run-pass option. I think yeah. Trapiti had visions of running, but, but the, Abbott, the, the Zebras were coming. Abbott was shadowing him all the way down the line of scrimmage. So it'll be fourth down and 21 for the Vikings. They'll punt this one away from the goal line. Landon Kelly stands back at midfield. Here's a snap, quick snap, quick kick, and it's taking a uh, tipping New Valley bounce, actually checks up and then rolls back Rochester's way inside the 40-yard line. So Rochester will start this drive right around the 37 of the tipping New Valley Vikings, leading 7 to nothing. Manitou Moose Lodge, 1107, 119 West Side Road. Rochester, call 223-3914, come out and enjoy family fun. Again, that's Manitou Moose Lodge, 11-07. On their scoreboard, the Zebras leading 7-0. If Zebras put another score on the board on this drive, Tippy Valley is going to have to circle the wagons and find something in a hurry that's going to work. Lane and Kelly comes wide to the near side, which is the Rochester sideline, the wide side of the field. Yarbers tight right, Barnes split left. High backs for Nick Allen. Takes a snap from Noah Swango. Hands off to Jackson going right. Isaiah Jackson hit at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for maybe one. Not a lot there. It'll be third, uh, first down and nine for the Rochester Zebras. I'm sorry, second down and nine for the Rochester Zebras. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. First quarter coming to an end at Rochester, under three to play. Rochester up seven to nothing. They have it second and nine at the Vikings 37-yard line. Zebras break the huddle with 15 on the play clock. Barnes and Kelly come wide to the near side. Eli Yarber tight left. Gary and Tarrant now dots the eye behind Bryce Abbott. Nick Allen has a snap. Back to pass. Rolls to the near side. Here comes the pressure. Throws back to the left side. Tarrant has a catch. Gary and Tarrant down the valley sideline. He's got a first down. Inside the 30. Inside the 25. First and 10, Zebras. Nice job of the Zebras setting up that uh, screen pass on the other side of the field. 11 yards on the pickup. As they get inside the 30-yard line. First and 10 for the Zebras at the Vikings 23-yard line. First down tonight brought to you by Woodlawn Hospital where quality and compassion meet. 2.15 to play in the first quarter. Rochester up 7-0. A fresh set of downs for Rochester. They're on the ball, the far hash at the 23 of uh, Valley. Wide to the near side is B.J. Barnes with 8 on the play clock. Split backs for Nick Allen. And now Kelly goes in motion to the left with 5. With 4, here's a snap. Abbott takes it up the middle. Bryce Abbott with three guys on his back. Carries it inside the 20. The spot on the near side says the 18. It'll be a pickup of about six yards, seven yards. It'll be second down and about four for the Rochester Zebras. From the 23 to the seven is six yards, but it looks <laughs> like second and five to me. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I wasn't the sharpest in math. Yeah, well. Yeah. Second down for <laughs> Rochester, second to five. Kelly in motion to the near side. Here's the snap. Abbott again off the right side. Abbott spin move of the line of scrimmage, falls ahead to the 15. They're going to mark him at the 16. That'll bring up third down and manageable. Third and about, what, two? Yeah. A long two for the Rochester Zebras. Giving the 16, it'll be third and three. A minute to play in the first quarter. Third down and three. For the Rochester Zebras at the Vikings 16-yard line, it would be a 33-yard field goal attempt from here if Rochester doesn't move it any closer. Barnes goes wide to the left side. Kelly comes wide to the near side. Out of the shotgun formation is Nick Allen with Isaiah Jackson to his left. Two tight ends for the Zebras. Down to seven on the play clock. On third and three, it's a quarterback keeper around the left side. He's got a blocker, and we're going to have a horse collar call in the backfield. And I think second effort might have gotten Nick Allen to the 15, but we're going to have a first down yeah. after a horse collar call. I think that's a 15-yard unsportsmanlike. That'll put him inside the 10-yard line. So Nick Allen escaped actually. Oh, he's waving it oh, off. Are you serious? That's an awful no call. He waved it off. You freaking sissy. So now it's fourth down and one from the 15-yard line. No, nope, nope. they're not going to give him anything. Nothing. It's going to be fourth down, and Sean Kelly is going crazy, and I don't blame him. Right. That was apparent horse collar as they grabbed him. So if he had by the back of the if jersey, he'd have been at the just, neck. if he'd have just fell down, that would have been the collar. Him but because down. he escaped from it, yeah. 
No, no flag. Because, he, because Nick Allen was strong enough to drag the defender. Awful. Yeah. B.J. Barnes comes wide to the near side. Going for it. Rochester will go for it on fourth and three. Allen enters center. Kelly comes in motion to the near side. Here's a fake pitch. Back to passes. Kelly has Isaiah Jackson in the end zone, and it's knocked away, but pass we're going to have a pass interference. Yep, at the goal line. And now Steve Moriarty is going to say, that's a makeup call, and but I now, can't blame him. No, I agree with the call. He was he had crawled up his back and was reaching over his shoulder when the ball was in the air. I agree with the call. So it'll be first down for the Zebras and a new set of downs inside the Evans Agency red zone, helping you with your insurance needs today and tomorrow. The defender was behind the receiver, and there was contact before the ball arrived. 17.8 to play in the first quarter. Rochester up 7 to nothing in a first and goal from the 8. Val, uh, Rochester leads Whitco 7 to 6. Jackson in motion on the end around. Here's Kelly, wide open, on his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Zebras. Landon, Landon Kelly from 8 yards out. And after the Rochester defense pins, Tippecanoe Valley deep on their own side. They come back after the punt and get another one. 13 seconds to play in the first quarter. Rochester now up 13 to nothing. And the PAT coming for the Zebras. Again, North Miami leads Whitco 7 to 6 early. Peru leads McConaughey 7 0 early. Bad snap. Good hands by Kelly. I make that Nick Allen. And Schaefer is able to get it through for an extra point. Rochester up 14 to nothing. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. From estate planning and trusts to adoption and family law to appeals, probate, and more. Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. On the Manitoulin Moose Lodge 11.07 scoreboard, Rochester now up 14 to nothing. After Rochester forced a Tippecanoe Valley punt, they went 37 yards in seven plays. Helped out by a couple of penalties against uh, Tippecanoe Valley, but uh, it ended up being an Isaiah or a Landon Kelly two-yard or eight-yard run into the end zone. Scoring drive brought to you by Roch uh, Fulton Roadstar Driving School. Call 574-780-2291. Rochester up 14 to nothing. First quarter coming to a close here at Barnhart Field. Tippecanoe Valley still looking to gain any positive offense at all. Rochester virtually flawless in the first they, quarter. Yeah, defensively, uh, they have been perfect. Schaefer ready. Vikings are ready. Line drive kick, bounces to the five, picked up at the goal line. Yeah, he and was in the end zone. The returner was in the end zone, so it'll be another touchback for the Rochester Zebras. Tippecanoe Valley's first two possessions resulted in an interception and a punt, both of which resulted in Rochester touchdowns. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. 13 and a half seconds to play in the first quarter. Rochester up 14 to nothing. The Vikings on their third series will start again at their 20-yard line. Ball in the middle of the field. Tanner Trapiti breaks the, the huddle. He'll send Davis wide to the right side. Trips, in fact, to the right side for Tippecanoe Valley. Trapiti will be in the shotgun formation. Trapiti takes a snap. Back to pass. Out to the flat. It is complete. And the Vikings, not much there after the completion. No. Maybe one. Is that Abbott all the way out there on the flat to make, the, <coughs> make the tackle? The uh, reception is Jalen Potter on the reception. Gets a yard, and that'll do it for the first quarter. On the Manitou Moose Lodge, 11.07 scoreboard. After one, Rochester leads 14 to nothing. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. Simplify your banking with a simply free checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we appreciate your referrals. Refer your friends to open a simply free checking account. When your friend opens a checking account, you can both receive a free gift. It's easy as one, two, three. 
Simply free checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. Upgrading your RTC internet can really rev up your Wi-Fi. Here's why. Wi-Fi is a stream of data flowing through your home, and each online device removes a portion of that data, which can slow you down. Luckily, small changes make a big difference. First, choose the fiber internet speed that's right for you. Upgrade to a whole home mesh Wi-Fi network and secure your network with a password. Contact RTC Fiber Communications to get your Wi-Fi up to speed. Back at Rochester High School, going to the second quarter. Rochester up 14 to nothing. And as we start here in the second, it'll look like it'll be second down and uh, eight or nine for the Vikings in their first positive yardage play in the game. Yeah, that was the first time they've gained, <laughs> moved the ball beyond the line of scrimmage and they're in a positive direction. So Trapiti under center, takes a snap on the option, gives to the fullback and he's stopped for very little. Abbott right there for Rochester again on defense as well as Marshall Fishback. I believe that carry was Jace Potter. I'm not to get to get a yard, did he? Third down and six for the Rochester and for the Tipping New Valley Vikings at their own 24-yard line. Trapiti in the shotgun formation. Three receivers. He runs to the left on a run pass option. He's going to run away from the defenders. He tucks. He's Runs over Jackson, carries it across the 30 to about the 31. That'll be enough for a Viking first down. Seven yards by Trapiti on the run. Jackson meets him right at the sticks. First first down for Tippy Canoe tonight. First down for Tippy Canoe Valley brought to you by Woodland Hospital. Wide to the near side comes Jalen Potter. Trapiti under center with the eye backs behind him. Off the right side. Gaff runs it shy of the 35 to the 34. Give him three, it'll be second and seven. We're in the second quarter coming up at halftime the week that was. Halftime first half stats, and we're going to have a talk with Rochester uh, golf coach Chad Thomas. That all on the way at halftime. Jalen Potter wide to the near side. Looks like Davis is le wide left. Torpedi direct traffic in the backfield. One lone back. Gaff comes in motion to the near side, fakes the pitch. Underneath is Potter, and Jalen Potter is cut down right at the 35-yard line. Not a lot there. It'll be third down for the Vikings. Romero, Romero and Daywald on the tackle for Rochester. Third down and a long six for the Vikings at their 35-yard line. Two receivers to the near side for the Vikings. Out of the pistols, Trapiti takes a snap, looks to the near side. Here comes the pressure, throws to the near side. It is complete to... Potter, Jalen Potter brings it into the 41. He's going to be shy of a first down by about a yard. I think they're going to give him the first down. Yeah, no, they are. They are. Not even a measurement. Nope. They put it, the guy on the side here had him marked at the 42, but I see they put it back at the 41. So without even a measurement, we're going to have yeah. a first down for the Vikings. It'll be first and ten for Tipping New Valley now at their 41. Ball in the near hash, which is the Rochester sideline. 12 on the play clock. The Vikings are going to have to hurry to get this one off. They break the huddle with seven on the play clock. With six, with five, with four, they're, with three. They don't even know. They're going to have to hurry yeah, they with don't two, even know with down. one. There's the delay of game, but we're going to think we're going to have a timeout first taken by Tipping New Valley, and we are. Yeah. On the Manitou Moose Lodge 1107 scoreboard, Rochester up 14 to nothing. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. This is Old View. 
And this is now you. Things change. Your insurance should too. Talk to an Indiana Farm Bureau insurance agent, and now you can stop knocking on wood. Slow download, constant buffering, Wi-Fi dead zone? Let RTC help. The customer support team at RTC Communications is here to help you with your internet connectivity. Hi, I'm Bonnie, one of the support team members here at RTC. For a small fee, RTC offers a Wi-Fi health check where we will evaluate your in-home Wi-Fi network and assist you with common issues. Aaron, the fullback, the tailback for Tipping New Valley is Gaff out of the shotgun. Estropini rolls left, Pressure. rolls away from DeWald, steps up, throws across his body. Great throw over the head of the tender receiver Potter. Allen on the coverage. Trapini rolling to his right, throwing with his right hand, throws that thing about 40 yeah. yards in the air, and then overthrows his receiver. Good heavens. Ethan DeWald in the backfield for Rochester, putting pressure on Trapini. So it'll be second and 10 for the Vikings with 8.52 to play in the first half. High backs for Trapiti on the quarterback option. Keeps Jackson it. grabs Trapiti, drives him backwards. He's going to lose. Uh, he's going to be stopped yard. for nothing. It'll be third and 10. Rochester, Third down and 10. Go Rochester ahead. defense doing a good job of penetrating the offensive line of Tippecanoe Valley and, and making contact in the backfield. A lot of pressure on Trapiti. Third and 10 for the Vikings. Ball on the 41-yard line. Trapiti has eye backs. He'll be under center. We're down to five on the play clock. Sets the line. Back to pass. Trapiti looks left. Here comes the pressure. Runs away, trying to run away from Yarber. Now switches directions, comes in the near side. He throws it there's to the near side. There's nobody there. Nobody there. And there's, and the there's going to be intentional grounding. Whistled against Tanner yeah. Trapiti and the Vikings. Back at the 19-yard line. line. Great job by Rochester defense. Elijah Yarber was the first one, then Pinder, and then uh, Romero chasing Trapiti back all the way to the 19-yard line. They're going to lose 22 yards. They're marking it from the 20 to the 15. Oh. So from the, it'll be now on the 15-yard line. So they're going to lose 26 yards. Yeah, Trapiti loses 26 yards on the play. It'll be fourth down and 36 for the Tipping New Valley Vikings with eight minutes to play in the first half. Rochester up 14 to nothing, and because of that, we'll probably have pretty good field position here. Yeah. Uh, Landon Kelly's coming up midfield. Trapiti punts, line drive. Kelly takes it at the 43. Oh, oh baby. He falls down. And slips down at the 42-yard line. He had a lot of green oh, grass my. in front of him. He was going to take that inside the Valley 30, but he lost his footing at the 42. Dog on 45 jumped up and got him. <laughs> well, I'm just glad he didn't roll an ankle or something, and it was just a slip. <laughs> First and 10 for the Zebras at the Vikings, 40. Three-yard line, right ball now, in the near hash. Right now, typically New Valley with a minus 18 total mm. yards of offense for this football game. Yarber goes wide right. Make that Barnes wide right. Two flankers for the Rochester Zebras. Nick Allen under center. Kelly goes in motion right on the jet sweep, but gives underneath to Abbott. Bryce Ooh, Abbott loses his hat. Helmet. Gets a, a couple of yards. It'll be second and eight, and he'll have to come out of the game for a play. And Romero will come in for him. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. The week that was coming up at halftime, we'll also talk to Rochester girls golf coach Chad Thomas. That all at the break. What's that say about the senior and four-year starter, Bryce Abbott? He hit the line so hard, he knocked his helmet off. Right. <laughs> Kelly, wide to the right side. Barnes tight left, Yarber tight right. Jackson dots the eye. On third down and nine, Jackson gets a carry going left. Isaiah with bobbling as he crosses the 40-yard line and gets it to the 39. He bobbled that thing for about Jeez. three yards, and Zebras are lucky to hold on to that. 7.15 to play in the first half. It'll be third down and seven for the Rochester Zebras at the Vikings' 39-yard line, ball in the near hash. That was one of them runs by Jackson where he took 10 steps to bank two yards. 
Uh, he needed 10 steps to re- secure the football. You're right. Zebras break the huddle with 18 on the play clock. Barnes will go wide to the right side of the field. Right, a wide side is the Tipping New Valley sideline. Kelly is in the slot right. Flanker to the right, I should say. Eyebacks for Kelly. Landing, or make that to Allen. Nick Allen hesitates, runs to the right side, looking to run away from the defense, cuts it upfield, and ran out of bounds right at uh, the, the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up fourth down and about seven for the Rochester Zebras. Actually, he's going to lose yards. And it looks like Coach Kelly will play field possession here. Nick Allen had time if he stayed in the pocket. It looked like the defense was, you know, going around him in the pocket, but he got a little antsy and ran out to the right trying to find an open receiver. And I think that's where he got himself in trouble. Fourth and eight as Nick Allen loses a yard on that quarterback scramble. Bryce Abbott will be back to kick this one away. And it looks like Jalen Potter stands inside his 10 right around the five-yard line to receive this one. There's a snap. Here comes some pressure. Abbott. Oh, bad punt. He kicked it straight up in the air, and it's going to take a Viking bounce. Yeah, and the Zebras down it at the Vikings 37-yard uh, line. So that was a three-yard punt. Yeah, well, it netted one yard because the line of scrimmage was a 38. 40. No, it was a 38. So first and 10 for the Vikings. Six and a half minutes to play. In the uh, first half, and it looks like we're going to take a water break, a mandatory uh, water break here for both teams. So we're going to take at least a 30-second. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. At First Federal Savings Bank, we enjoy helping first-time home buyers, And with our premier first-time home buyer program, there's no private mortgage insurance cost. Only as little as 5% down is required for this program. Talk with one of our experienced mortgage lenders and let us help you purchase your first home. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. On the Manitou Moose Lodge 1107 scoreboard, the Rochester Zebras lead the Tippecanoe Valley Vikings 14 to nothing. It's and I think that you uh, hit the nail yeah. on the head in that during that break. Yeah, uh, Ross, Rochester's offense desperately needed to move that football deep into Valley territory. 14 points is not enough yeah. to win this football yeah, game. I agree with that. Typically, New Valley, if they put anything together here with this six and a half left in the second quarter, they get the ball back to start the third. And by the middle of the third quarter, we could be looking at a tie ball game. Yeah. But that was just hypothetical. Rochester's defense has been playing lights out tonight. And Typical New Valley's offense has struggled. So Jace Potter and Conley back in the game for Typical New Valley. Go to three back backfield. First and 10 for the Vikings at their own 38-yard line. Ball in the near hash. Trapedi under center. Gives to Conley off the left side. He fumbles the football. And the Zebras say they've got it. And they do. The Zebras and Nick Allen fall on the loose ball. And they'll take over at the 36 of the Vikings. Just like that, Rochester's defense again with their second turnover of this football game, and they set the offense up again in tremendous field position. So quickly, Rochester's going to be on the football, first and 10 after the turnover and the Nick Allen recovery with six and a half minutes to play in the first half, leading 14 to nothing. B.J. Barnes will go wide to the right side. The flanker to the right side is Isaiah Jackson, split backs for Rochester. Jackson comes in motion to the near side. Back to pass is Ke- uh, Allen. Nick steps up, throws down the Valley sidelines. Got a receiver. It is oh. incomplete. Off the hands of, looks like Landon Kelly, yep. who the intended receiver. And it looks like Landon Kelly hesitated just a little bit. If he keeps he running, he's probably got that thing in stride and into the house. I agree. And that time, Nick Allen stayed in the pocket. The, the offensive line did a great job of pushing the defense out in that little horseshoe formation that you see. Yeah. And uh, this time, Nick Allen held his ground, stood in the pocket, and made a great throw. First and, I'm sorry, second and 10 for Rochester at the Vikings 36 yard line. 13 seconds on the play clock. BJ Barnes comes wide to the near side. Landon Kelly split right, split backs for Nick Allen. Allen takes a snap, flips out to Abbott. Abbott. Bryce Abbott, blockers in front of him, stiff arm at the 35, and is brought down inside the 35 at around the 33. I think he got out of bounds. Maybe even the. Th- yeah, maybe the 33. Not much there. Third down and about seven. Got a little flyover by a powered parachute. Yeah. 
Six minutes to play in the first half. Rochester third down and seven at the Vikings 33-yard line. Wade Schaefer down here warming up his field goal kicking. We leg. might be a fuzz out of his range right now. Right now, yeah. Yeah, that'd be about a 53-yarder from here. B.J. Barnes wide to the right side on third and seven. Jackson comes in motion to the near side, but gives underneath to Landon Kelly, Kelly. and no, Landon Kelly is going to be pushed backwards to the 35-yard line, so he's going to lose two yards, and will bring up third down to nine. So will Coach Kelly keep the offense in, or will punt, and it looks like the punting unit is coming on, playing the field position game again. This now time, the field, now the punt team says, wait a minute. Yeah, let's hope this time Al, uh, Abbott can yep. uh, get it off the front of his foot instead of the side. And so the punt unit comes on. The Vikings not sold. It's going to be a punt. Bryce Abbott is your punter. He stands at around the Viking 45-yard line. Nobody back deep for Tippecanoe Valley to receive this punt. Fourth down and nine for the Zebras. Snap. It is a fake punt to Smith. Xavier Smith. Yeah, and nothing going to happen He's going to be pushed backwards. And yeah, he's going to be stopped back at the 43-yard line of the Vikings, so they take over in really good field position. The Vikings was, were not sold. No, that was terribly executed on Rochester's part. Yeah. They left uh, Smith out there all alone on the corner. Uh, there was nobody out there to block for him, and one guy made the stop and ten guys buried him. First and ten for the Vikings at their own 43-yard line. So that turnover did not hurt Tippecanoe Valley. That's actually Tippecanoe Valley's best offensive field position yeah. of this football game. 4.54 to play in the first half. Zebra's up 14 to nothing, Trapedi in the shotgun. Trapedi on a quarterback keeper right up the middle. Grabbed by Je uh, uh, Abbott. Bryce Abbott. And the ball's out again. The Zebras say the ball's out again. They've got another fumble recovery. Bryce Abbott forced his second fumble. And this time he just ripped it out of Trapedi's hands and took it away from him. Bryce Abbott caused the fumble and recovered it, and the Zebras will take over after another turnover by the Vikings. That's four tonight. That's three. The interception and two fumbles. Both fumbles caused by Abbott. Allen recovered the first one. Abbott recovers the second one. 4.48 to play in the first half. The Zebras up 14 to nothing. They're on the Vikings 46-yard line. Two wings for the Zebras. Jackson comes in motion to the near side. He gets the pitch with Abbott in front of him. Cuts it upfield. Isaiah Jackson running hard. Carries it inside the 40. Down to around the 37-yard line. That's going to be a close. Hello, I'm Harry Webb of Webb's Family Pharmacy. Were you one of nearly seven? Second and one. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. The Zebras up 14 to nothing. It'll be second and one for Rochester. The Vikings 37. Valley defenders with their hands on their yep. hips. Breathing a little hard here coming down the end of the second quarter. Kelly wide to the right. B.J. Barnes split left. Eye backs for Nick Allen. Abbott right up the middle. Bryce Abbott carries it inside the 35 to the 34. First down brought to you by Woodland Hospital where quality and compassion meet the Zebras in a fresh set of downs at the Vikings 34-yard line. Whitco now up in North Miami in the second quarter, 14 to 13. Yikes. B.J. Barnes goes wide right. Ball in the near hash, the Rochester sideline. Out of the shotgun formation now is Nick Allen with Rice Abbott to his left. It's a quarterback run. Allen up the middle. Allen over the left side gets close to the 30. They're going to give him the 30 there, and the bush push gets him back to the 30. Give him four. It'll be second and six. How long ago was that? Oh, it might be 10 years now. The Bush push, Val? 13. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I asked you, Brad. I'll just ask Val. There you go. <laughs> you got the living encyclopedia next to you. Second and six for the Rochester Zebras at the Vikings 30-yard line. Clock rolls with 3.15 to play in the first half. B.J. Barnes breaks the huddle, go wide to the right side, which is the typical New Valley sideline. Same formation as last play, but they go right this time. Allen Breaks got a first it. down, slips a tackle, carries it inside the 20, down around the 16-yard line. The Zebras are in the Evans Agency red zone, helping you with your insurance needs today and tomorrow, actually giving the 14. It'll be first and 10 for the Zebras at the Vikings' 14-yard line. 16-yard run by Allen. That time he had Abbott out in front. They went the opposite side of the trips and caught Valley, found a seam in that defense. Yeah. First and 10 for the Zebras at the Vikings 14. 
B.J. Barnes wide right. We're down to 2.45 to play in the first half. Nick Allen under center. Good goes in motion to the right side. Make that Kelly goes in motion to the right side. He gives to Abbott off the right. Abbott push or hit right at the line of scrimmage, but the second and third effort from the near side, maybe the 12. No, maybe the 13. Give him a yard. It'll be second and nine. Abbott just lowering his head and diving into that pile. Second down and eight. Two ten to play in the first half. Rochester up 14 to nothing. Goes motion to the right. Allen takes the snap, gives to Abbott. Bryce Abbott slips no. down to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. Truthfully, both defenses playing really, really well tonight. Valley's been really stingy against the run. That 14-yard run by Allen was the biggest, or the 16-yard run by Allen was the biggest run by anybody tonight in this football game. So from here, if Rochester doesn't gain another yard from here, it's about a 30-yard field goal attempt for Wade Schaefer. Third down and uh, eight for the Rochester Zebras. They'll send trips to the right side. Jackson, Yarber, and <laughs> Kelly. This is a new look, too. Yeah. Out of the shotgun. Allen rolls right. Back throws back left to Abbott. Abbott and he drops, drops the football. It. He had blockers in front of him, drops the football. Yeah, that's a little different wrinkle when you throw back to Abbott. Typically, you're, it's a uh, screen to Kelly or Jackson. So Wade Schaefer will come on. Should be kicking this from about the 20-yard line, which makes it a 30-yard field goal, uh, shading toward the far hash. Nick Allen is your holder. Schaefer's got plenty of leg to kick this one to the school from here. Looking to put the Zebras up 17 to nothing. Snap is back. Hold is down. Kick is away, no and it's blocked. Actually picked up by the Vikings. Yeah, that could Jay be returned. Jalen Potter comes to the near side, and B.J. Barnes runs him out of bounds. And that's blocked at the line of scrimmage. Schaefer didn't really get it up high enough. No. And Jalen Potter on the deflection takes it back to the 26-ish yard line. So that's where Valley will start this series with a minute 11 to play in the first half. First and 10 for the Vikings of their own 26. They've got two timeouts and a minute 11 to work with. Rochester up 14 to nothing. Their last two possessions have resulted in fumbles caused by Bryce Abbott. First half stats of the week that was coming up. We'll talk to uh, Zebra golf coach Chad Thomas as well. Out of the shotgun is Trapiti. High snap. Trapiti pulls it down. Rolls left. Steps up. Rolls right left again. Throws it in the middle. And actually, on the, on the flat, I should say it is incomplete. Conley is the uh, retended receiver. Yeah. It'll be second down and a 10 of the minute four to play Elijah, in the first half. Elijah Yarber in the backfield for the Zebras, forcing Trapedia to continue to roll out, trying to throw on the run. Rochester getting a lot of pressure on Trapedia in this first half of this football game. Second down and 10. Trapedi did a really good job individually by creating his own space, by yeah. hesitating and going and hesitating. And, and the little fake pump that got Yarber yeah. to leave his feet, yeah. Valley with nine on the play clock, finally sets the line of scrimmage. They've got trips to the near, they have twins to the near side. Trapedi back to pass. Here comes the pressure, steps up, looking to the near sideline. It is oh. incomplete. B.J. <laughs> Barnes grabbed the interception, but it was out of bounds. It'll be third and ten. That would have been a tough pass to complete. They did have a receiver out there, and I believe – uh, Potter, well, but there were three zebras around him. As I say, unfortunately for Tippecanoe Valley, they had two receivers within about two feet yeah. of each other, and therefore three defenders, one short and one long. A minute to play in the first half. Rochester up 14 to nothing. The Vikings looking at third and 10 from their 26 yard line. Trapedi with eye backs behind him. Takes a snap, back to pass, rolls on the near side, then throws back screen. left. Zebra's not fooled. Yarber grabs the receiver, Conley, and he's going to drop him for a loss. So it'll be fourth down and 11. Will Rochester use a timeout? They're trying. Coach Kelly's trying. About 10 seconds run off the clock. 46.5 to play in the first half. We'll take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. Hello, I'm Harry Webb of Webb's Family Pharmacy. Were you one of nearly 7,000 patients we served last year? If not... 
I'd like to invite you to check out our locally owned pharmacies. Transferring your business is easy to do. Just one call and we'll take it from there. While our competitive prices are important, our success comes from our knowledgeable and compassionate staff. Make Webb's Family Pharmacy your pharmacy. Just one call and we'll take it from there. Just called their first time out of... Oh, sorry, Paul. Late in the second quarter, Southwood leads Wabash 28 to nothing. Back at Rochester High School, 46 seconds to play in the first half. Rochester just used their first timeout. Valley looking at fourth down and 11 from their 25-yard line. And they will punt. Kelly back <laughs> to receive the punt, maybe. Yeah. Because the punter is also their quarterback, Trapiti. Trapiti takes the snap, gets it away. Nice kick. It takes a bounce and rolls into Rochester territory inside the 40, inside the 35, and Rochester will start this drive at their own 36-yard line. 34. I'm sorry, 34-yard line, going to our left with two timeouts and 37 seconds to play in the first half. Tippecanoe Valley in this first half, minus 19 yards total offense. Trapiti only six yards passing in this first half, and Manchester had over 200 last week by halftime. Really? Yeah. Wow. This Rochester defense showed up to play tonight. They've done a tremendous job. And Bryce Abbott has been the, the spear point yeah, of this defense. right on. B.J. Barnes comes wide to the near side. Ball in the middle of the field. Kelly wide right. High backs for, Landon, uh, for Allen. Nick Allen takes the snap. Hands off to Jackson, Jackson. off the right side. And Jackson tiptoes back to the line of scrimmage. And it'll be second and ten. Coach Kelly going to let the clock roll, and that might have been just that might have been the last play of the half. Clock rolls. It'll be second and ten. Here comes the play from the sideline. The play does come in. If they get it off. There's about a 10-second difference. Actually, the clock will run out before the play clock expires. Right, and they don't look like they're in any hurry to get this play off. Down to nine, and, and that's going to do it. At halftime, the Rochester Zebras lead 14 to nothing. We're going to keep it right here. And we're going to go right into the scoring drives for the Rochester Zebras. With 4.43 to play in the first quarter, Isaiah Jackson scored first for the Rochester Zebras on a two-yard touchdown run. The Wade Schaefer kick was good. It was 7 to nothing. Then with 13 seconds to play in the first half, Landon Kelly scored on an eight-yard touchdown run. The kick was good again at the end of one and at halftime. Rochester leads 14 to nothing. Brad, you have first half numbers. Yeah, for Tippecanoe Valley, Tanner Trapiti has four carries for minus 29 yards. They've got a total of negative 25 rushing yards in that first half. Trapiti, three of nine with an interception for six yards passing the football. Tippecanoe Valley, minus 19 total yards of offense in the first half. For Rochester, Nick Allen, six carries for 30 yards. Bryce Abbott, 12 carries for 42. Isaiah Jackson, seven carries for 17 yards and a touchdown. Landon Kelly, three carries for eight yards and a touchdown. Uh, Wade Schaefer missed a 30-yard field goal in that first half. Rochester with 97 total yards of rushing. Nick Allen, one of three for 13 yards passing in that first half. And uh, Rochester with 110 total yards of offense in the first half. On the Manitou Moose Lodge 11.07 scoreboard, right now Rochester at halftime leads Tipping New Valley 14 to nothing. Time now for the week that was in Rochester Athletics. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years, and now we're offering commercial lending. Are you looking to purchase commercial real estate, equipment, or open a business line of credit? First Federal Savings Bank is your locally owned community bank for all your business banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. Whatever phone fits your style, RTC Fiber Communications can save you money when you switch to VoIP. VoIP is a phone service that leverages the power of the internet to save you money on your monthly phone bill. 
same great service at a fraction of the cost. Contact RTC today to find out more about this money-saving offer. Online at www.rtc1.com. Enjoy full-screen television viewing of the new RTC TV4 family of networks anywhere you are with our new Roku channel. Simply purchase a Roku device from RTC or any Roku retailer, connect to your in-home Wi-Fi, then download the RTC TV4 channel. It's that easy. Watch all of our live channels 24-7 for free or subscribe to view all of our videos at your convenience. The RTC TV4 channel on Roku, another great service from RTC. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> Neighbors help each other. It's how our community works. And it's how we do business at RTC. We know you count on us for fiber internet, TV, and phone service backed by friendly local support. Your hard-earned dollars stay right here as we invest in our community, our people, and smart technology. RTC Fiber Communications. We're your hometown communications provider working hard to be a good neighbor. The RTC TV4 family of networks allows you to watch nine local television channels dedicated to coverage of our schools and our communities directly on your mobile device through our new app. Just look up RTC TV4 at the App Store or the Google Play Store. There is no cost to download the app or cost to view the live channels. With a paid subscription, you can also view any of our past videos on demand whenever you want. Download the app today and start watching. RTC Cable subscribers, now you can watch your favorite cable networks wherever you are, on your phone, tablet, or computer. Just log on to www.watchtveverywhere.com. Enter your RTC account information and sign up to watch TV everywhere. Live sports, videos on demand, and more, all for free with your RTC Cable subscription. Watch TV Everywhere, another great service from RTC. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer a wide variety of services for our customers. We offer a variety of deposit products, such as personal and business accounts. We pride ourselves in being one of the top mortgage lenders in Indiana. We offer commercial lending and business checking to help with your business banking needs. Through LPL Financial, our financial services department is here to help you with your financial planning needs. Come see us today and see how our family can help your family. Save money when you switch your home phone service to VoIP from RTC. Everyone knows that RTC Fiber Communication is the area's leading provider of high-speed fiber optic internet service. Now, RTC can help save you money on your monthly phone bill by switching your phone over to the internet with VoIP. Same great service at a fraction of the cost. Contact RTC today to find out more about this money-saving offer online at www.rtc1.com. There's been a lot of talk lately about net neutrality. At RTC, our customers receive the full and open internet and nothing less. We are not the gatekeeper, toll operator, or curator. A free and open internet has been the single biggest driver of innovation over the last generation, and we want that engine of innovation to live on in our customers. If you ever have a question about your internet service, give RTC a call. We are here for you. Ever wonder why your local TV bill keeps going up? The bulk of these increases are due to rising network fees. A few powerful media companies dictate what TV providers must pay to offer their channels to you. And every time networks demand more money, that affects what you pay every month. If TV providers don't meet their demands, networks threaten blackouts. Since 1999, these network fees have increased by three and a half times the rate of inflation. To see what we're doing to keep network fees in check, visit TVOnMySide.com. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. 
I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. This is Old You. And this is now you. Five wears his fire hat and coat in the room. Things change. Your insurance should too. Talk to an Indiana Farm Bureau insurance agent. And now you can stop knocking on wood. 3-6 love. The number one Dibbles team of Andrew Dunwoody and Amber Miser won 6-1-6-2. And Brock Beeler and Brayden Zink won at number two doubles, 6-3-6 six, six love. On Thursday, Rochester's uh, tennis team defeated Knox 5-0. Grant McCarter at number one singles won 6-1-6 six, six, love. Kyle Reinhardt at number two singles won 6-2-6-1. Six, six, Quinn Stasiak at number three singles won 6-love, six, 6-love. Six, Aaron Dunwoody at number one doubles, and Aaron Miser won 6-3, 6-2, six, six, and Brock Bueller and Brandon Zink, uh, Braden Zink won 6-love, six, 6-love. Six, love. And Varsity Girls Golf last night, Rochester defeated Tippecanoe Valley 192-199. to Christiana Lingenfelder fired a 42. Kara Lingenfelder and Marley Strasser a 48. Maddie Henning and Kat Rinsberger a 54. Savannah Eccles and Delaney Barkman a 59 in the JV match. Ashlyn Foster a 63, Reagan Becker a 62, and Ashlyn, uh, Ashley Hazelby, that is, a 66. And that'll wrap up the week that was for Rochester Athletics. We're going to take a quick timeout, come back with Coach uh, Thomas's interview. That's next on 92.1 WROI. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. From estate planning and trusts to adoption and family law, to appeals, probate, and more, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. Simplify your banking with a Simply Free Checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we appreciate your referrals. Refer your friends to open a Simply Free Checking account. When your friend opens a checking account, you can both receive a free gift. On Giant FM Sports and RC, RTC TV4, Rochester Lady Zebra Golf Coach Chad Thomas joins us. And we have done this a lot over the years, Chad. I don't know how many how many years you've been coaching. I think I've lost track after 10 or 20 or 30. But um, you know, you always put a really good product on the course, and um, the, the girls are, are well represented. And and uh, this year, everything's the same. Uh, you got some Lingenfelders back again this year. So, in a nutshell, give me give me your assessment of the year. Well, yeah, this is my 19th season uh, doing girls golf, and. Uh, it's, uh, it was nice to have everybody come back from last year. I had 13 girls total, which is the most I've ever had, and uh, which presented some problems, but it, they're good problems to have. It, it's nice to see the kids uh, came back, and then we had some new uh, faces come out, and we had some freshmen that uh, came out that played for me in the middle school because I coached the middle school team in the spring. So uh, in a nutshell, we finished the season eight and seven with our dual match record. So it's nice to have a winning season. Um, we, we progressively got better as the year got, went on, um, both for nine holes and 18 holes. Um, you know, we, we finished the TRC in fourth place, and it was a very competitive TRC. Uh, I was talking to one of the coaches at a, at a match afterwards, and he was talking about as well, you know, how he couldn't believe how tightly bunched everybody was. Um, so that's good. The TRC, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, in girls golf is going to be very competitive here in the next few years. I know McConaughey's got some good yeah. young players coming up in Valley, has five freshmen that play. And, you know, we've got a good bunch of girls, um, good core coming up and, and some middle schoolers. So TRC is going to be very exciting. Right, when, when, when you talk about the TRC and you finished in the middle of the path, or actually uh, above half, mm -hmm. What were, you, what were the anticipation going in? What were your expectations? My expectation was McConaughey was a team to beat. And, uh, but we, I thought if we had a, a very good day and, and a couple of those teams, Wabash and McConaughey, uh, slipped up a little, we, we could get up there and, and give them some heat. And uh, 
we had a good day. We shot 388, which is the best score we've had all year, but um, still in still fourth <laughs> place. And uh, um, but we just we got off to such a slow start, and you know, on that front nine there, it's it's tough. Where was it? It's at Norwood, okay. uh, which is actually a course that's getting ready to close the doors October 1st. So we'll be searching for a, a new place. And, and why don't we play someplace local? They they've always wanted to have it on a neutral golf okay. course and. Um, we have the last few years, it's been at Norwood, and they've been really good hosts to us. Um, plus, it's a sectional site for a lot of those teams like okay. Manchester, and so that's mm -hmm. a nice thing for them. Uh, so we'll be looking. I know the boys play at uh, Rosella in, in Warsaw. It's a neutral course, centrally located with the TRC pretty much. Um, my vote would be for Stonehenge, being, right being uh, our, our sectional course. So <laughs> that'll be my vote, if, but I don't get a vote, but I'll, I'll <laughs> talk to the people who do vote. So, um, uh, yeah, that gave us some good momentum because uh, we did play better on the back nine. Christiana had a good round. She, she finished second place. I know she was frustrated. She left a lot of shots out there. So we could have done a lot better in 388, I know, and the girls know. So that's good. And we knew that we shot our best score, but we still had a lot left to, uh, to, to give. Christiana has been your number one all year, hasn't she? Yeah, she has. She's a defending sectional medalist. And uh, really, at the end of the season, last year, at this point in time, she really started to turn it on and, and had a great day at, uh, at Stonehenge last year. Hopefully she gets to repeat, you know, has a good day and can repeat or at least um, you know, have a good showing. As far as the team goes, the yeah. sectional, um, we, uh, you know, Northwood is, is the, the clear favorite. They're number eight in the state. Um, I think they just had like their fourth or fifth straight undefeated dual match season. Um, so they're, they're a great team. They, they've got a lot of young players up there that have really uh, put in a time in the summer, so they're the, they're the favorite. Then you have Warsaw, who who we went and played earlier in the year. They beat us, um, and then uh, Wawasi played in our invite, and and they beat us there. But you know, with in the take the top three teams out of there, I think um, you know if we go out and we have a really good day, and either a Warsaw or Wawasi stumbles, we we're going to be right there knocking on the door. But we've got to get off to a good start. We've got to be mentally focused, uh, not getting down on ourselves. You know, that's been an issue with some of the girls that get down on themselves and then that ruins the round. We cannot let one or two holes ruin the rest of the 16, 17 holes. And what time does that start tomorrow? We start, uh, we're in the second wave. Uh, first tee ball goes in the air at 9 a.m. We're in the second wave. Uh, we go, Kat Rensberger tees off at 9.50. Um, then we have Maddie Henning, who's going to be the number four. Marley Strasser is going to be the number three. She's had a great year playing the best golf of her career. Um, so hopefully she has a good day tomorrow. We got uh, uh, number two will be Kara Lingenfelder, who's really come on uh, last night, second half of her round. She, she's, she's gained a lot of confidence. I saw her out there. I reminded her, reminded her of something that we worked on early in the season. It started to click. So hopefully that carries over tomorrow, and then obviously Christiane will go at 10:30. So, Ron, I asked Jesse uh, Atkinson the same question last week because his numbers is so, are so good uh, for tennis, and I asked him, "Do you feel the middle school tennis program has helped the varsity pro or the, the high school program?" And he said, "Absolutely." Yeah. If, so if I ask you that same question, do you feel the middle school golf program is helping your high school program? Absolutely. Um, we are very lucky that we have. Uh, it, it's not a club. It, it is an official middle school sport, whereas, you know, some like tennis, for example, is a club, but that, you know, he's got good numbers there. And every, and I've been coaching the, the middle school golf team for like the last six years, I think it is. And uh, I consistently have, you know, up, I think I average about 18 kids a, a, a season, both boys and girls. Last year, uh, I had like 30 some sign up and I thought, well, that's gonna be a problem. We don't have a big enough uh, uh, area for that. So it, once it came down to it, we, we had about 20, 18 to 20 kids come out and uh, just getting them introduced to the game. I know they have a lot of choices, you know, with other sports, um, but anytime we can get a kid out there uh, doing something, being involved in something, Maybe it's they just want to try it, you know, and, and they play baseball or other sports, run and, you know, volleyball, whatever. But this is the time, especially in middle school, where kids need to see 
and experiment with other sports and you know they won't maybe ever have the, this opportunity ever again to get out there and get uh, get a chance to hit balls for free and go to other golf courses and learn things uh, you know etiquette uh, teaches integrity you know honesty honor and and uh, it's just it's really good for for our school system our city to have kids involved like that not just going home and doing nothing yeah and it's a big deal that that Lyle does as much as he does for you at, at, at the golf course uh, it's it's incredibly insane how lucky we are you go you walk into the entryway right now and uh, we've got a whole corner dedicated to free golf clubs for kids guys that uh, don't have you know they have golf clubs that they don't want anymore bring them in we you know kid if, if you have a kid at home that wants to get involved in golf contact the golf course we can set them up it's not going to be a full brand new set of Callaways or Titleist but it's going to be a club we can put in their hand mm -hmm. to get them interested in the game and you know thinking of how lucky we are uh, the city of Rochester to have the golf course that we do it is the centerpiece of our town as you, you, you drive through 9th Street, you know, we have people from all over. What are they going to see first when they come in off of 25 there by the hospital? They're going to see the golf course. And I just I just hope and pray that um, we continue to have that that gem that is the centerpiece of our community. Um, I, I go, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I go to courses all over northern Indiana <clears throat> and uh, we are very fortunate to have what we have and so uh, Lyle does a tremendous job out there the guys out there you know do, they work their tails off and uh, my hats off to him I've been a part of that part of that maintenance crew for 20 years so you know my blood sweat and tears out there too so you know I look back and we've in, in the last two years there's been just in the northern half of the state we've had probably over 15 golf courses I could count right now off the top of my head that have closed their doors mm -hmm. This is the time where we need to grab those players from those courses and uh, really show them what type of masterpiece we have here and, uh, you know, keep it going. That was Lady Zebra golf coach Chad Thomas here at halftime. Uh, we appreciate, um, we appreciate uh, him stopping by and, and giving us a recorded interview. And, um, you know, I've known Brad, I've known Ron a long time and, uh, he you, he was a third man with us for a long time, and yeah. it doesn't come much better than Chad Thomas yeah, and, did, and like what he's said, doing with the golf. Is, yeah, he's been doing that for 20 years, he said. That's you know, yeah. He does a great job. Aaron Midback deep to receive the third quarter kick for the from the Rochester Zebras. The Zebras start the second half leading 14 to nothing, and Valley very fortunate it's only, only 14. 14 to nothing. I agree. 14's not going to win this football game, though. Rochester defense going to have to stay tough like they have in the first half. That's not Aaron Midback. But Valley takes it to the five. At the 15, the 20, cuts it upfield. Still on his feet. And is finally brought down as he crosses the 30 yard line. Down to around the 40, and that return man was Braden Shepard. They're going to mark him at the 34, it looks like. And Braden Shepard takes it from the five out to about the 34 yard line. So the Vikings will start their first possession of the second half in pretty good position. Rochester defense forced three turnovers in that first half two of which led the Rochester touchdowns and <clears throat> Tippecanoe Valley with minus 19 total yards in the first half. Uh, and still very much uh, in this football game. Right. Yep, you're, absolutely, you're only a couple of plays away from this being tied up. Davis wide to the right side. Potter goes in motion left. Potter gets a carry going left. Potter still on his feet down this Tippecanoe Valley sideline. Grabbed from behind and brought down, but not until he gains about 11 or 12 yards. Potter's going to cross to the 45-yard line. That's an 11-yard gain on first play of the third quarter. First down for Tipping New Valley, brought to you by Woodland Hospital, where care and compassion meet. That's the biggest play of the game yes. so far for Tipping New Valley. I got a text at halftime. Clear back in 1999, Rochester had a 21 to nothing halftime lead. Valley forced a tie by the end of the game, and Jason Fincher kicked a game-winning field well, goal Oh, I that remember year. that, yeah. yeah. And that was at Valley. I backs for Trapedi. Trapedi gives to Conley right up the middle. Conley a huge hole up the middle. And he's got another first down for the Tipping New Valley Vikings. Hey, real quick, last Saturday, uh, the, uh, the youth football team started. The third and fourth black team, coached by Dave Clark, beat, beat North Miami 49-14. The third and fourth gold team, coached by Eric Murphy, uh, beat Peru 49-42. to And the fifth and sixth gold team, coached by Jason Coleman, tied Peru 6-6. That's two back-to-back. Double-digit runs by Tippecanoe Valley. 
Trapedi again to Conley again. Another big hole for Conley off the left side. He carries across the Rochester 40 down to around the 39-yard line. Picks up about four yards. It'll be second and six. And just like that, three plays, and Valley is broke even on the day. So we go to halftime, and Whitco leads North Miami with four and a half minutes to play in the first half, 14-13. Yeah. Now at halftime, North Miami leads Whitco 33-14. to Wow. Wow is a good word. On first, uh, second and four, Aaronman right up the middle. He's got another Valley first down as he carries it down to the Rochester 31-yard line. Give him eight and another Viking first down brought to you by Woodland Hospital. And right now, Rochester's defense, after playing basically the game of the season in the first two halves, are on their heels yeah. here to start the third quarter. At halftime, Southwood leads Wabash 41 to nothing. We're First being, and 10 for the Vikings of the Rochester 31. Being buzzed overhead by helicopter. Trapedi flips out to Conley on the near side. Conley is brought down by Landon Kelly, but not until he gets to the Rochester 24-yard line. Give him another seven yards. It'll be second and three. Boy, you talking about uh, switching team the flip? Yeah. yeah, flipping the switch there. Re-energize. Re Tipping New Valley right now. They're doing whatever they want to do. If they keep this up, uh, Rochester's going to be in a track meet yeah. before this quarter's over. Aaronman and Conley in the uh, I formation. Trapedi under center. Gives to Conley off the right side. Conley another huge hole. And he is not hit until he gets to the second and third level. The Rochester Zebras down to the 16 and another Valley first down after he gains eight. Typical New Valley's offense right now having no trouble with Rochester's defense. The front line for Typical New Valley that's been getting pretty well beat all night long. Yeah. Suddenly they take over and they're in control. Uh, apparently Coach Moriarty challenged these kids at halftime and right now they're responding. Twins on the near side. Conley dots the eye. Torpedi under center from Rochester 16. Conley gets the carry, and Rochester's going to stop him after about a yard or two gain. Give him the 14. It'll be second and eight. After going from minus 19 total yards, Valley now with 33. Valley by far the deepest in Rochester territory in the uh, red zone brought to you by Evans Agency. Rochester up 14 to nothing. Valley driving here the first series of the third quarter. They're at the Rochester 14. I backs for Trapedi. Here's a pitch out to Gaff. Gaff is hit hard by there's a flag. Abbott, and there's a flag on the play as Gaff carries it to the oh, 11. They're going to say a chop block against Rochester. How do you chop block how does the on defense, defense? Yeah, how does the defense chop block? How do you chop block on defense? What? Wow. That's that's a 10-yard penalty from the 15-yard uh, line. That's so it'll be half the distance for the... No, that's a 10-yard penalty from the 15-yard line. That's going to put it first and goal at the five. So after the penalty, it'll be at the six-yard line for the Vikings. As a lone back in the backfield for Trapedi is Aaronman. Potter goes in motion. Aaronman with the carry over the left side. Valley looking for the end zone. No signal yet. Well, touchdown, Zebras. Oh, I'm sorry, Valley. touchdown, Valley. Aaronman over the right side, carries it in from six yards out. Tippecanoe Valley, a completely different football team as uh, they come out and just ram it right down Rochester's throat to open this third quarter. They did not have a run of less than five yards on that drive. And that was just because they ran out of field there. So the extra point coming, low snap, and we're going to have a stop at a play. Is this going to be offsides? On the, it will be offsides on Rochester. So now will Coach Moriarty go for two? 8.28 to play in the third quarter. It's 14 to 6, and it looks like the Vikings will keep their extra point uh, team on the field. So Trapedi is your holder. Extra point coming 
Looking to cut this lead to one. Touchdown. The kick goes to Akron, and it is good. 14-7. Rochester still up. You're listening to Zebra Football and Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. Upgrading your RTC internet can really rev up your Wi-Fi. Here's why. Wi-Fi is a stream of data flowing through your home, and each online device removes a portion of that data, which can slow you down. Luckily, small changes make a big difference. First, choose the fiber internet speed that's right for you. Upgrade to a whole home mesh Wi-Fi network and secure your network with a password. Contact RTC Fiber Communications to get your Wi-Fi up to speed. On the Manitou Moose Lodge 11.07 scoreboard, Rochester uh, now up by just 14 to seven and with the uh, Fulton Roadstar driving school scoring drivers, Brad. Tippecanoe Valley takes the opening kickoff of the second half, 66 yards in nine plays as Araman takes it in for Tippecanoe Valley from six yards out to cut the lead, zebra lead in half. Zary, uh, Xavier Smith, Gary and Tarrant and Landon Kelly back deep to receive the kick from the Tippecanoe Valley Vikings. And Brad, that looked Easy. That that did. Uh, Typical New Valley, uh, just like I said, they just hit Rochester in the mouth and just drove it right down their throats to the end zone. So the kickoff coming from the Vikings. Nice high end over end kick. Tarrant takes it at the 8. Gary and Tarrant at the 15, the 20. He's got some room at the 25 and dropped right there at the 25 yard line. So Rochester will start at their own 25 to start the third quarter or their first session of the third, I should say. 8.23 to play in the third. Rochester up 14 to seven. Rochester's offense has been kind of sputtery. They've had some uh, decent plays followed by several mediocre to poor plays. And if it wasn't for the fact that the Tippecanoe New Valley offense had set Rochester up in tremendous field position, I, I don't think they would have scored. Yeah, Kelly goes in motion to the right. Here's a snap, Abbott gets it going right. Bryce Abbott stacked up, not a lot there. Maybe a yard, it'll be second down and long for the Zebras. Actually give, give him, yeah, not a lot there. Yeah, maybe give him two. two, it'll be second and eight. 8 8.08 to play in the third. I actually thought that the Tippecanoe Valley defense played pretty well, you know, you know, based on the circumstances they were given in that first half. Yeah, I agree. B.J. Barnes goes wide right. The flanker to the right is Isaiah Jackson. Flanker to the left is Lane and Kelly. Lone back is Abbott. Ten on the play clock. Kelly goes in motion right on the jet sweep. Takes a carry and then hands off to Jackson coming to the near side. Jackson with some blockers. Looking to turn the corner at the 30 and brought down at around the 32. Good blocking out front by Swango. And also, Kel I believe Allen, Nick Allen was out there yeah. blocking as well with seven yeah. and a half to play in the third quarter. Five yards for Jackson coming around the corner. Third down and four for the Zebras. At their own 31-yard line, ball in the near hash. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. Typical News Valley's defense pursues really, really well. Yep. There were as many white shirts on that corner as there were black shirts. Barnes wide to the left. Kelly wide to the right. Eye backs for Allen. Nick Allen takes a snap. Back to pass. Looks right. Throws right. Over the head of the intended receiver, Kelly. And that's going to be fourth and four for Rochester. And on comes the punting unit. Yeah, I really think, like I mentioned early in this football game, I really thought Nick Allen was going to have to have a good night throwing the football for the Rochester to be successful. And yeah. you know, th that hasn't been the case for Nick Allen. And, um, you know, right now Rochester holding their own. Jalen Potter back deep to receive the kick from Bryce Abbott, who stands at his 20. 14-7 Rochester with 6.53 to play in the third quarter. Snap is back. Very little pressure. Abbott gets it away. Takes a bounce at the Valley Vikings 42-yard line and rolls out of bounds at the 33. So the Vikings will start their second series of the second half at their own 33. Rochester up 14-7. They made it look easy. Their last possession starting from the 34-yard line. And nine plays later, they were punching the end zone. Yeah, boy. And it was a, a quick eight, Rod nine, yeah. ten yards at a time, 12 Rod yards Rochester at a time. Rochester had no answer for that yeah. offense that came out of the locker room for Tippecanoe. 
Torpedi breaks the huddle. <clears throat> Jalen Potter will be uh, tied to the left side. Aaronman, the lone back in the backfield. Tanner Trapedi under center from his own 33. Aaronman right up the middle. And second or third effort gets him across the 35 to the 36. Give him about three. It'll be second down and seven for the Vikings. 6.40 to play in the third quarter. Rochester up 14 to seven. Do we have any scores? Yeah, yeah. we have scores. Uh, Peru, le or McConaughey leads Peru 22-21. Northfield leads Manchester 21-14. Southwood over Wabash 35 to nothing. Second and seven for the Vikings. I backs for Trapedi. And Gaff breaks a tackle. Stops, cuts back, slips across the uh, midfield marker and brought down at the Rochester 48-yard line. I'm, I'm not, not sure. Yeah. Why, why did he stop running? <laughs> I don't understand that. He, he broke through the Rochester defense, broke a couple of tackles. And looked like if he had just kept fading to his left to the sideline, nobody was going to catch him. It was at least another 10 or 15 yards. And he, he stopped and tried to come back to the middle. Yep. First and 10 for the Vikings. Now at the Rochester 48-yard line. Six minutes to play in the third. Rochester up 14-7. to seven. Torpedi has the play from the sideline. Breaks huddle with 10 on the play clock. They're going to have to hurry. We're down to seven. We're down to six. We're down to five. Torpedi in the pistol. We're down to three. We're down to two. We're down to one. And... Just gets a play off. Gives to Airman on the left side. Airman down the Go valley sideline. Airman at the 30, the 20, and brought down inside the 30-yard line. Inside the 20. Uh, inside the 20, a bigger part of the 19. They, he is in. They are in, I should say, the Evans Agency red zone. First and 10 for the Vikings at the Rochester 18-yard line. Airman in this second half alone has 46 yards on four carries. And typically New Valley has brought a different team out of the locker room, and they are just shredding this Rochester defense, which was so tough yeah. in the first half. Ball in the far hash now for the Vikings. First and 10 for the Rochester, 18. Aaronman is your fullback. Potter goes in motion to the left. He gets a carry going left. Potter carries it back across the grain, cuts it back across the grain, carries it up the field, and takes it just shy of the 10. In fact, giving the 12, it'll be a pickup of near six. It'll be second down and four for the Vikings as they're knocking on the door again. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. Well, we knew 14 points wasn't going to win this football game, and right now, Tippecanoe Valley is going to make it a new game just as quickly as they can. Second and four for the Vikings of the Rochester 12. They'll send two receivers in the near side. Araman is your fullback. Tanner Trapedi shouts instructions to the line of scrimmage with seven on the play clock. Gaff comes in motion to the near side. He gets a pitch coming left. Gaff cuts it up the middle, looking for the end zone. Gaff driving hard. Second effort might have got him to the five-yard five line, but it'll be a first and goal for the Vikings at the five. Gaff and Araman for Tippecanoe Valley doing the majority of the damage right now. Is I don't think we saw either one of them in the first half. Woodlawn Hospital sponsors the first downs tonight where quality and compassion meet. First and goal for the Vikings at the Rochester 5. Zebras up 14-7 to seven with, with their, four to play in the third. With their backs against the goal line again. again. Conley, your new back in the game. He's in the backfield. Gaff comes in motion to the near side. Gaff gets the carry going right. Untouched into the end zone. Touchdown to Vikings. Just like that, Tippecanoe Valley. Two possessions and two scores, and we are back to a tie, almost a tie football game. 14-13, Rochester. A five-yard touchdown run by Dakota Gaff with 3.52 to play in the third quarter. Pulls the Vikings within one. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is away, and it is good. We are tied at 14 on the Manitou Moose Lodge 1107. We'll take a quick timeout, come back with a scoring drive next. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. This is old you. And this is now you. Things change. 
Your insurance should too. Talk to an Indiana Farm Bureau insurance agent, and now you can stop knocking on wood. That's how long it took them to tie the game. Brad, you have the Fulton Road Star Driving School uh, scoring drive. Yeah, I do. Tippecanoe Valley, uh, six plays, 67 yards, and in less than five minutes, they've scored. They've tied this football game up here to start this third quarter. Gut check. Yeah, definitely. Right now, we don't have an answer for for Tippecanoe Valley's You're offense. Right. High end over end kick. Kelly Batlett it bounces he into does. the end zone. A touchback for the Vikings. Right. Yeah. And Rochester will start at the 20 for their second series of the second half. Night and day for the Tippecanoe Valley yeah, Vikings. you're not kidding. They, uh, they sat the JV at halftime and brought the varsity out, it looks like. <laughs> uh. <laughs> First and 10 for the Zebras of their own 20 were tied at 14. 3.52 to play in the third quarter. Barnes and Kelly come wide to the near side. Yarborough will be tight left. Eye backs for Nick Allen. Allen ready, ducks up under center with 15 on the play clock. Whoa, we're losing the lights. We're losing the lights on the near side. That might be a bad omen. Yeah, that's not good. So we're going to... I got a feeling, Paul, we're going to have to take a break that's here. It's going to be a while before Yeah, I'm get, guessing you're yeah. right. So on the Manitou Moose Lodge 1107, we have a delay here at Rochester because the lights on Are the uh, south side of the field, yes. it looks like most of them, if not all, are out. No, I don't believe this, this pole down Far here pole. is out. Down looks here like east. just over the press box. Yeah. We'll take a timeout. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. Slow download, constant buffering, Wi-Fi dead zone? Let RTC help. The customer support team at RTC Communications is here to help you with your internet connectivity. Hi, I'm Bonnie, one of the support team members here at RTC. For a small fee, RTC offers a Wi-Fi health check where we will evaluate your in-home Wi-Fi network and assist you with common issues. See what RTC can do for you. Give us a call today. At First Federal Savings Bank, we enjoy helping first-time home buyers. And with our, they may have decided that uh, the coaches decided let's do it. Maybe darkness will help. Either that, or maybe they're maybe they're coming back on. Back at Rochester High School, well, it's still a little dark here at Rochester, especially on the Rochester sideline. But both coaches have agreed. Let's go ahead and play yeah. this. Basically, from the 20 to the 20 is uh, just a little dimmer. That would be a great time to run the triple option. A you lot think? of deception. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. No lights, yeah. a lot of deception. I like it. <laughs> Anything that'll work. Barnes tight right, Yarber tight left. Eye backs for Kelly. Or make that for Allen. Nick Allen pitches it out to Isaiah Jackson, who fakes the handoff and runs to the near side. Isaiah Jackson grabbed around the belly and brought down at about the 24. Yeah, not a lot there for Rochester. I think they're going to give him all the way to the 25-yard line. Are they? Okay. Give him five. It'll be second and five. Clock rolls, three and a half to play. In the third quarter, we're tied at 14 here at Rochester. Battle for the Bell 2019. Boy, Rochester really needs to put a long drive together here and yeah. take some of the wind out of Valley sails. Well, that's exactly what Coach Kelly told me in the pregame. Our offense needs to be our best defense tonight. Yeah. Third and five, second and five, that is. Yep, and Rochester the Zebras jump. The Zebras jump, it'll be a false start and a marching backwards five yards. It'll be second down and 10 after the penalty. And that's the first. Actually, wait a minute, yeah, what are we talking about? They're discussing, well, a Zebra or a Valley lineman jumped first and pulled the Rochester yeah. lineman up, but it, he didn't cross and make contact, so it's still motion against Rochester. So it will be, after a yeah. brief discussion, it will be second down and 10 after the five yard penalty back right. at the 20 yard line. But, you know, Rochester played you know, a near perfect first half. No mental mistakes whatsoever. And uh, that was the first one of the game right there. Barnes wide to the near side, which is the Rochester sideline, short side of the field. Kelly split right out of the pistol is Allen. 
Nick Allen on the option. Works to the right here side. Fakes the pitch. Cuts it up the middle. Nick Allen to the 30. Nick Allen kicks it out to the outside of the 35. At the 40. And shakes another tackler at the 45. And down at midfield. A great run for Nick Allen who takes it out to midfield after a 30-yard scamper. Nick Allen, great job weaving his way through the defense. Getting Rochester out from the goal line to midfield. I would say out of the shadows of the goal line, but we're still having a lot of shadows. Yeah, it's a little darker at midfield than it was where we were at before. <laughs> First and 10 for the Zebras, ball in the near hash, which is the Rochester sideline. Kelly wide right, B.J. Barnes split left, split backs for Nick Allen. Abbott the carry off the right side. Abbott a couple of the yards. Give him two, it'll be second and eight. 2.15 to play in the third quarter. Rochester and Tippecanoe New Valley tied at 14. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. Well, we needed that run, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Rochester needs to keep this drive alive and take this into the fourth quarter. And then uh, all bets are off as we go into the fourth. Kelly split right, Barnes split left, down to 12 on the play clock, back to passes. Allen throws down to B.J. Barnes on the sideline. Really good defense by yep, Conley. Rode, rode him out of bounds, and, of course, Nick Allen didn't help any by throwing it out of bounds. And it's going to be second down and uh, make that third down and eight for the Zebras at the Vikings' 48-yard line. 146 to play in the third. We're tied at 14. Yeah, when you're thrown into that short side of the field, kind of yeah. run out of real estate quickly. Right, he put that up really high in the air. and You're right, by the time it came back to the ground, it was a good five yards out of bounds. Yeah. Yarber, Jackson, Kelly go wide to the right side. Short side of the field is B.J. Barnes, and the shotgun is Nick Allen with Abbott at his right. Third and eight, back to pass. Here's a wide receiver screen, and it's bobbled. We're going to have a flag in the play for yep, roughing, roughing the, the passer. passer, and it's going to be a first down to the Zebras. Conley, O'Connor, that is, will be called for the penalty. Yep, bailed Rochester out on that one as uh, Screen pass actually lost four yards, but because of the roughing the passer penalty, it'll be an automatic first down for Rochester. You know, Kelly had a rough time hauling that in. He Might did. that have been anything to do with the lighting? I, I can't imagine so, but just, you know, Valley is so quick on their pursuit. I'm thinking he was wanting to turn up field and he just couldn't get his fingers on the football, and he didn't want to fumble it. So it'll be first and 10 for the Zebras. Inside the Valley, 40 at about the 37. With 100 seconds to play in the third quarter, we're tied at 14 here at Rochester High School. Rochester with a huge opportunity here. They need to take advantage of it. Abbott is tight to the left side. Yarber is tight to the right side. Out of the pistol is Nick Allen with Jackson behind him. Oh, we and jumped again. And we're going to have a false start on the Zebras. Another mental mistake by Rochester. Back him up five, it'll be first and 15. And that was going to be a quarterback keeper with, uh, with Jackson as an option for yeah. him to pitch. Both of them sprinted due right when that ball was snapped. First and 15 for Rochester, now at the 42 of the Vikings. A minute 24 to play in the third quarter. Kelly goes wide to the right side, Barnes split left. Uh, here we go again, same formation. Out of the pistol is Nick Allen, Jackson behind him. On the option, Allen keeps, cuts it upfield. Nick Allen runs over a defender, crosses the 35 to around the 34-yard line. He's got those penalty yards back plus a couple. Eight on that run by Allen. Second. And again, it's it's working. There's nobody there to, to cut off the quarterback. And, uh, you know, he's got Jackson for the pitch, but they haven't had to use it yet. Second down and six for the Zebras. Down to 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. Landon Kelly goes wide right, which is the wide side of the field. Barnes split left. Yarber and Abbott in the shot, uh, pistol, or makes that the tight end position. There's now flips it out to Jackson. Isaiah Jackson turns the corner and ran out of bounds around the 30-yard line. I'm not sure exactly where he got to. It'll be third down now for Rochester. He's not going to give him about a yard. Yeah, must have ran out of bounds around the 33, and that's what it'll be. Third and nine, five now for Rochester. After At three times in a row, Valley finally had that one defended. Down to 14 of the play, uh, game clock, and that'll do it for the for third quarter. Rochester, though, going to be on the football. We're down to five, to four, and that's going to do it for the third quarter. After three, we're tied at 14. We're going to the fourth at Rochester High School. You're listening to Zebra Football 
on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. At First Federal Savings Bank, we enjoy helping first-time home buyers. And with our premier first-time home buyer program, there's no private mortgage insurance cost. Only as little as 5% down is required for this program. Talk with one of our experienced mortgage lenders and let us help you purchase your first home. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. Hello, I'm Harry Webb of Webb's Family Pharmacy. Were you one of nearly 7,000 patients we served last year? If not, I'd like to invite you to check out our locally owned pharmacies. Transferring your business is easy to do. Just one call and we'll take it from there. While our competitive prices are important, our success comes from our knowledgeable and compassionate staff. Make Webb's Family Pharmacy your pharmacy. Just one call and we'll take it from there. Back to the Manitoba Moose Lodge 1107 uh, scoreboard, Rochester and Tipping New Valley. Tied at 14 as we go to the fourth quarter. You have some quick scores from around the area? Yeah, uh, North Miami over Whitco, 33-14. Uh, LaVille over Caston, 56 to nothing. Winnemac and North Judson are tied at eight. And Culver leads Triton, 28 to six. That Caston scores at halftime, by the way. Yeah. Third and five as we start the fourth quarter for Rochester. The ball's at the Tippecanoe Valley 32-yard line. Nick Allen will be in the shotgun with Isaiah Jackson to his right. Tight right is Jarber, tight left is Abbott. Wide to the right is Kelly and wide to the left is B.J. Barnes. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. As we start the fourth quarter, third and five here at Rochester. Back to pass, holy crap, a long, a long uh, drop. Gets it out to Jackson. Isaiah Jackson picks first his way down. through the defense. Out to the 30, make that the 25 yard line, first to 10. He's already in the shotgun formation and Nick Allen drops another 10 yards. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was lucky that uh, Jackson was able to get up field after he caught the football or he'd have, he'd have caught it behind the line of scrimmage. First and 10 for Rochester, brought to you by Woodlawn Hospital. Ball now at the 25 yard line. Kelly comes wide to the right side, Barnes split left. Abbott tight left, Yarber tight right. Shotgun formation for Nick Allen. Actually, this, we're gonna call it the pistol formation with Jackson behind him from the Viking 25 yard line. Here's the snap on the option. Allen coming to the near side, flips it out to Jackson. Ugh. Yeah. And Isaiah Jackson going to lose a yard. It'll be second and 11. Tippy Valley has seen Pursued that. Well, yeah. Yeah, they've seen that set up enough tonight that uh, they're not going to be fooled again. It'll be fun to see if we can throw out of that because they pursue so quickly yeah. to the football. Let's give a, a run pass option on the run option and throw, dump it over the middle to Yarber. Second and 11 for Rochester, now at the uh, Valley 26. 14-14, we're in the fourth, just started. Landon Kelly wide right, B.J. Barnes tight left, Yarber tight right, eye backs for Nick Allen. Allen fakes the handoff, rolls to the near side. Flips it out to a wide open, B.J. Barnes, he's got the catch inside the five. First and <laughs> goal for the Zebras. Yarber was wide open at the five yard line. Nick Allen throws it to Yarber and B.J. Barnes comes. First Federal Savings Bank has provided. In front of Yarber, thank goodness he caught it because he had a defender draped all over him. And Rochester first and goal at the one, oh, and at the, the two. Evans Agency Red Zone helping you with your insurance needs today and tomorrow. First and goal for the Zebras at the two. We're going to a full house backfield. Barnes tight left, Yarber tight. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans. For center takes a snap, gives to Jackson, going right. Isaiah Jackson lowers his head and he loses fumbles the ball. ball. He's, on the one gonna fumble, yard line. He's going to fumble the ball. He reaches out for the end zone, and he loses the football on the way down. They're going to say he did not cross the, break the plane, and the Zebras turn the ball over at the one-foot line. Yeah, yard, just like you said, Jackson's reaching for the goal line and drops the football before he hits the ground, and Valley falls on it, and it's a fumble. I mean, the, the, the nose, the back nose of that football is on the goal line. Is Close, really close to the goal line. Rochester squanders a huge oh opportunity there. First and 10 for the Vikings at their one foot line. 10 and a half minutes to play in the game. We're tied at 14. If this were in the first half of this football game, I would think Rochester would be looking at a, a safety. safety. Yeah. But the way Valley's offense has played, I don't think we're in trouble. <laughs> Torpedi under center. 
Takes a snap, Rapiti right up the middle, and gives his team a, a, some a room cushion. as he gets out maybe to the two. It'll be second down and eight. With 10-15 to play in the game, we're tied at 14. Trapiti carries it for two yards out to the two. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. Rochester 14, Tippecanoe Valley 14, 10 to play in the game. Second down and eight for the Vikings at their own two. Trapiti under center with eye backs behind him. Conley dots the eye. Trapiti gives to Conley off the right side. Conley backs his way across the five to around the seven or eight yard line. It's a manageable third down now for the Vikings, third and about two or three. Ball at about the eight yard line. They need to get to the 12 for a first down. Obviously a big play here for Rochester's defense if they can get a, get a stop for a loss. I'm sorry, they need to get to the 10 for the first down. Yep. Third and two for the Vikings. Trapiti, hands off again off the right side. Gonna get and that's going to be down. another first down for the Vikings as the Vikings take it out to about the 13-yard line. I'm not sure Conley with the carry there. Sure. And give Conley the 13. Clock rolls first and 10 for the Vikings. Brought to you by Woodlawn Hospital. Nine to play in the game. Tied at 14. Now they got some operating room. Yep, you're right. 40 to 14 now. North Miami over Whitco. First and 10 for the Vikings of their own 13. Trapedi under center. Aaronman actually to Conley off the right side. Another huge hole for Conley. He carries some zebra tacklers out to the 29 yard line. Another first down for the Vikings as the Vikings blowing the Rochester Zebra defense, defensive line off the ball. Oh, yeah, they've been doing that the entire second half. Rochester dominated the first half defensively, and Tippecanoe Valley with, with negative y total yards at halftime. And ever since this third beginning of the third quarter, Tippecanoe Valley's offense have been unstoppable. Yeah. First and 10 for the Vikings at, the, at, the, uh, at their own 29-yard line. Aaronman is the fullback. Trapedi under center with seven on the play clock. 8.15 to play in the game. Right up Airman the middle. right up the middle again. Airman across the 30. Tackled near the 32. Give him three. It'll be second and seven. Eight minutes to play in the game. We're tied at 14 here at Rochester High School. Fifteen on the play clock. The Vikings on the ball in third and uh, make that second and seven. Trapedi ready. Gaff goes in motion right. He gets the pitch going right. He's got some blockers. Runs away from Yarber. Gaff right up the middle. He's off to the races. Nobody's going to catch Gaff at the 45, him. at the 40, at the Rochester 35 and 30. Cuts back across the grain, and B.J. Barnes brings him down. Touchdown saving tackle, but not until he gets inside the Rochester 20. The 19-yard line. Great job by B.J. Barnes bringing him down one on one. First and 10 for the Vikings at the Rochester 19 yard line with 7.25 to play in the game. We're tied at 14. Four, 49 yard run by Conley. Uh, Gaff, I believe. Gaff, 49 yard run by Gaff. Aaronman is your fullback. Gaff is a flanker to the left. He goes in motion to the right side. He gets the carry going right. Runs into a wall at the line of scrimmage and not a lot there. Maybe nothing. Second, second ten. Well, they moved the marker two yards. Okay. <laughs> Maybe second and eight. Yeah. Wow. I Val think that was generous. Yeah. Valley now with 181 total yards or rushing yards in this football game. Second and eight for the Vikings at the Rochester 17-yard line. All in the second half. Vikings break the huddle with 15 on the play clock. Two receivers on the near side. We're down to 10 on the play clock. Out of the pistol now, Strapiti with seven on the play clock. Here's the snap. Conley off the left side. Shakes the tackler in the backfield. Shakes another tackler as he grabs him by the back. Conley, second or third effort, takes the ball inside the 10. Dell round the eight. First and goal for the Vikings inside the Rochester 10. Valley looking at for their first lead of the night. 
Down once upon a time, 14 to nothing. We're tied right now at 14. And this drive started with the football on the back of the goal line. Oh, boy. The back of the football on the goal line. RTC says we broke the plane of the goal line before that fumble. Well, he doesn't have possession of the football if you look in that picture, though. From the 17, Aaronman grabbed by Yarber and pulled backwards. I'm sorry, that was from the eight. Give him a yard. It'll be second and nine. Second and goal now for the Vikings at the seven-yard line. Ball in the middle of the field. Down to five and a half minutes to play in the football game. Tied at 14. Vikings break the huddle with 13 on the play clock. They'll send Davis wide to the right side. Conley split right as well in the slot. Torpedi under center. Gaff goes in motion right. He gets the pitch again. Gaff chucks one tackler looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings. Dakota Gaff again, this time from eight yards out. Now the Vikings are up. Tippecanoe Valley has had three possessions, and they've scored all three times in this second half. Gaff with his second touchdown in this half. 5.15 to play in the football game. And it's now 20 to 14 Valley with the PAT coming. And the extra point is through and it's 21 to 14 Tippecanoe New Valley. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years, and now we're offering commercial lending. Are you looking to purchase commercial real estate, equipment, or open a business line of credit? First Federal Savings Bank is your locally owned community bank for all your business banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. Whatever phone fits your style, RTC Fiber Communications can see. Seven scoreboard, Valley now leads 14. Uh, make that 21-14, Brad. Yeah, Tippecanoe Valley after the Rochester fumble on the one yard line, they take it 99 yards and three quarters <laughs> in 10 plays and Gaff for his second score of the evening. Scoring drive brought to you by Fulton Roadstar Driving School. Call them at 574-780-2291. Tippecanoe Valley has been un answerable in this second they half. Have, I mean, Rochester's got, they have no answer, nothing. Valley is just going through them like yeah. wet, wet butter. They, they they have called every right play this half. Absolutely, yeah. So here we go, the Rochester Zebras. And that scoring drive came after a fumble. Low line drive kick, takes a hop at the 15, bobbled at the 10. Still Picks, bobbled. And Gary, Gary and Tarrant with his eyes up, almost loses the football again, but dives on it at the 11, uh, the 16 yard line. So Rochester, a little over five minutes to go and 84 yards, can they put it together? They yep. haven't looked good this second yeah. half. Give him 17, in fact, the one big play was what, Nick Allen's run. Yeah, the Nick Allen's run and Nick Allen's pass to B.J. Yeah, Barnes that put true. Rochester on the two yard line. Unfortunately, they couldn't punch it in. Barnes split left. Kelly wide right in the slot. Out of the shotgun is Nick Allen. Jackson to his left, Abbott to his right. Here's a snap, low snap, picked up by Allen. Looking left, throwing left past Barnes. It is complete. B.J. Barnes catches the football at the 25-yard line. Pickup of eight. It'll be second and two. Under five to play in the game. Valley now leads 21 to 14. And we might just have to stick with that. That was a good pass. Yeah, you're Rochester right. in the huddle. Breaks the huddle with 20. Barnes comes wide right. Kelly in the slot on the left side. Nope, is going to be flanker to the left side this time. Jackson flanker to the right. He goes in motion to the right side. Lane and Kelly gets the carry. And he okay. might have gotten back to the line of scrim. No, he didn't. The mark on the near side says he's going to lose yards. It'll bring up third down in about three for the uh, Rochester Zebras. 4.20 to play in the game. Valley leads 21 to 14. Rochester looking at third down and three from their own 24. 
Rochester looked like they were going to run away and hide in this first half of this football game, and they missed three scoring opportunities, two in the first half and one big one there at the start of the fourth quarter. North Miami now leads Whitco 46 to uh, 14. High backs for Allen on third and three. Nick Allen back to pass, rolls to the near side. He's got a receiver down the middle of the field and thrown behind B.J. Barnes. And it's going to be fourth and three. Yeah, trying to make too much out of that play. He had he had uh, Landon Kelly wide open for a first down on the, on the sideline over here, and he chose to try and throw it back across his body to the middle of the field. And uh, Rochester didn't work out. With 3.48 to play in the game, they will go for it. Rochester has three timeouts. They will go for it. Yeah. Third and three, fourth and three, that is, at their own 24-yard line. Game on the line right here for sure. Kelly wide to the near side with 10 on the play clock. Allen in the pistol with five. Here's the snap. They'll keep it on the option. No blockers. Nick Allen is going to be stopped shy of the uh, line of scrimmage. He's going to lose a yard and will turn the ball over on downs. Nobody out there for Nick Allen. He was out there by himself with white shirts and uh, kind of hard to get three yards when Nick, you're outmanned. Nick Allen loses a yard. And Valley will take over first and 10 at the Rochester 23-yard line, leading 21 to 14 with 3.40 to play in the football game. The way they've played this second half, they'll be in the end zone in two plays from the 23-yard line. Yeah, you're they, not kidding. They've scored on every possession in this second half. The Vikings break the huddle with 18 on the play clock. Aaronman is your lone back in the backfield for Trapedi. Conley is the flanker to the left. And he goes in motion to the right. Trapedi right up the middle. Tanner Trapedi is tackled at the 11-yard line. I don't know if that was the design play or not, but he read that really well and took it off the left side where there wasn't a black jersey. And yep. took it inside the Rochester 15, in fact, giving the 12. A first down for the Vikings at the Rochester 12-yard line. Clock rolls. 325 to play in the game. The Vikings lead 21 to 14. Aaronman and Conley in the backfield. In the I formation, Trapedi under center with seven on the play clock. Conley gets the carry left. Conley looking for the end zone, dragging a couple of zebra tacklers Touchdown. with him, and he did not get oh. there, but he did get it down to the one. Give him 11. It'll be first and goal for the Vikings at the zebra one. Tippecanoe Valley looking for their 28th unanswered point yep. here in the second half. Three minutes to play in the game. Valley leads 21 to 14. First and goal for Tipping New Valley at the Rochester one. For PD sneak? Maybe not. Oh, sure. Why not? Or Connolly. Just let him ram it. For PD, snap. Takes yep. the quarterback. Keeper over the left side. Touchdown. All he had to do was fall down. Well, I was off by one play. They did it in three. <laughs> Tanner Trapedi on one yard touchdown run and now puts the Vikings up 27 to 14 with a PAT coming. Uh, 2.45 to play in the game. So the Vikings ready for the extra point. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is away. Ooh, did I it go he, left? I think he shanked it. It is no good. 27-14, Tippecanoe New Valley on the Manitou Moose Lodge 1107 scoreboard. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. Enjoy full screen television viewing of the new RTC TV4 family of networks anywhere you are with our new Roku channel. Simply purchase a Roku device from RTC or any Roku retailer, connect to your in-home Wi-Fi, then download the RTC TV4 channel. It's that easy. Watch all of our live channels 24-7 for free or subscribe to view all of our videos at your convenience. The RTC TV4 channel on Roku, another great service from RTC. Back at Rochester High School, the Valley Vikings now up 27-14, Brad. Yeah, three plays, three, 23 yards as Tanner Trapedi sneaks it in from one yard out. Scoring drive brought to you by Fulton Roadstar Driving School. Call them at 574-780-2291. Good outfit. I've had to go through their driving school. Good people. Yeah. Even Joel. 
<laughs> 27 to 14, Valley up here at Rochester High School. And a little squib kick is going to go, go out. out of bounds. Yep, at the 20 with 2.45 to play in the game. And, yeah, why not? Give them a penalty. That way uh, Gary and Tarrant or Landon Kelly, Kelly or Xavier Smith doesn't get a return, yeah. 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 That would have been about the only way Rochester could have got back in this football game. Unfortunately, it would have had to go through Valley's offense again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, next week we're back on the road. We are at uh, Peru to face the Peru Tigers. And they, the, were, they were losing the last uh, I had heard to McConaughey. Uh, the RTC Communications player of the game and the Rochester Ford Lincoln Post Game Show coming up after this one. Out of the shotgun is Nick Allen with four receivers, two to the right, two to the left. Allen back to pass. Looks left, looks left, throws left. And that ball is incomplete as Jalen Potter broke up the pass intended for B.J. Barnes. And it will be second down and 10. 2.40 to play in the game. Well, 14 and a half point underdog yeah. are the Irish. Yeah, I think it's too much. If I had money to bet. You'd take the points? I'd take the points. Hmm. Okay. Just saying. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm with you. And I'm not sure if it's right. No. Allen back to pass. Not. Steps up against the pressure. Runs away from the pressure. Cuts it back inside. He's hit hard at the 34 yard line. And maybe a yard. It'll be third down. Give him two. It'll be third and eight. 225 to play in the game. Vikings leading out 27 to 14. I'll tell you what, if the Irish can't get a running game tomorrow night, it's lights out for them. They can't play like they get against New Mexico. Third and eight. Rochester ready. Nick Allen under center, back to pass. Here comes some pressure. Nick Allen is hit. He's going to be sacked. Totally, totally different team for Tippecanoe Valley came out of the locker room in oh, the third yeah. quarter. Well, I'll tell you what. The junior high team that was in white jerseys in the first half for Valley put on black jerseys in the second half. Oh, That's my assessment of this football game. So Nick Allen loses three yards. It'll be third, uh, fourth, and 11. Rochester takes a timeout. We'll take one, too. You're listening to Zebra Football, 92.1 WROI and RTC TV4. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> Four yard line, less than two minutes to play in the game. The Vikings up 27 to 14. Rochester has two timeouts left. Kelly wide to the near side. Barnes split left. Yarber tight right. Allen will be in the shotgun with Bryce Abbott to his right. Brad Thomas, I'm David Musselman. Ball spotted at the Rochester 34. Fourth and 11. Allen gets a snap. Back to pass, steps up, throws to the near side, looking for Kelly over his yep. head, incomplete, first and 10 for the Vikings. That was an assigned pass, just turn and throw it to Kelly. He was double teamed front and back. There really wasn't much chance of him catching the football, even if it wasn't overthrown. So more than likely, the Vikings will lay it up in the uh, victory formation, I would think. I don't know that for sure. Would, a minute 54 to play in the game. Be first and 10. It'll be first and 10 for the Vikings. We snapped that from the 34. The ball is spotted at the 33. <laughs> huh. Trapedi under center. Eye backs behind him from the 33. Conley right up the middle. Conley maybe to the 25. It looks like it's starting to get a little chippy, too. 29-yard line. Yeah, give him four, give him three. It'll be second and seven. Clock rolls, 100 seconds of play in the game. Valleys are going to stay unbeaten in the TRC. Tippecanoe Valley with over 250 yards in this second half. They had a minus 19 at the halftime, 232 now. Rochester going to fall to three and two overall, three and one in the TRC. Second down and a short seven for the Vikings. 
for Petey letting the clock roll all the way down. We're down to six on the play clock, down to a minute 15 to play in the game. Gaff again is driven backwards. And his forward progress gets him. Uh, are you kidding me? He's going to get a gain a yard. It'll be third and six. They're going to give him forward progress, even though he got knocked back five. With 55 <laughs> seconds to play. Nope, we're going to have a Rochester timeout. 52 seconds to play in the game. The Zebras will take a timeout. Valley up 27 to 14. You're listening to Zebra Football 92.1 WROI and RTC TV4. Neighbors help each other. It's how our community works. And it's how we do business at RTC. We know you count on us for fiber internet, TV, and phone service backed by friendly local support. Your hard-earned dollars stay right here as we invest in our community, our people, and smart technology. RTC Fiber Communications. We're your hometown communications provider working hard to be a good neighbor. Back at Rochester High School in the Manitoulin Moose Lodge 11.07 scoreboard, the Vikings lead the Zebras 27 to 14. 50 seconds to play in the game. The Vikings looking at third down and three at the Rochester 28. Torpedi hands off to Conley going right. Conley around the right side looking for the end Got zone the down the sideline looking for the pylon. Touchdown Vikings. Nothing fancy. And now we're going to have a flag in the play after the fact. So Conley runs it in from 28 yards to put the Vikings up 33 to 14. The touchdown stands, and we're going to have unsportsmanlike against the Vikings. So they'll kick what? Will that be assessed on the extra point of the I kickoff? Assu I assume I guess the it extra doesn't matter point. really. Yeah, I assume it'll be the extra point. So the Vikings are now up 33 to 14. And that's the play, Brad, that has worked the entire second half. Every play Valley ran the second half has worked. They've scored every time they touched the football, their last two possessions in less than four plays. So yeah, you know, you would think they would line up and take a knee on that last drive, but they said, you know what? We're just gonna run what we've been running all night. You stop us. Yeah. And we didn't. The extra point is good. And another, another flag, flag. In the play. So it's 34 to 14. We're probably going to have another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Who against? Rochester this time. Uh, a little retaliation. Is that maybe. personal foul? Yeah. So that'll be assessed on the kickoff. Well, so will the 15 yard <laughs> unsportsmanlike penalty against oh, Valley. So they're offsetting now. Yeah, that will be unsportsmanlike as Rochester threw somebody to the ground, is yep. what I saw body language read. Well, we'd like to wish uh, Chad Thomas and the Lady Zebra golf team the best of luck tomorrow in the sectional. Uh, he has hopes of maybe getting out of there as a team, and I, yeah. we wish, him, wish them the best. Absolutely. I know there's a uh, little small cross-country meet at uh, New Pray tomorrow. <laughs> a couple thousand people showing Val, up. Val, where are you that? going? Girls golf sectional. Val's going to the golf sectional? Yeah. 100 teams at New Prairie tomorrow I say, yeah, to run. A couple thousand people showing up for that little event. <laughs> That's yeah. that small event. <laughs> so the Vikings will kick off to the Rochester Zebras. 45, 45 seconds to play in the game. High end over end kick. Kelly takes it at the 5. Landon Kelly at the 15, the 20. Kelly up the middle. Shakes a tackler at the 25 and is brought down at about the 27-yard line. Maybe the 28. 34 to 14. The Valley will keep the bell for the second straight year. First time in five years the road team won the hmm. Val, wow. a plethora of information. <laughs> yep. First for time in five years that the road team has won the bell. There you go. I'm not sure why we just don't mic him up. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's your show. <laughs> Zebras will send four receivers, two to the far, two to the near. Nick Allen out of the shotgun, back to pass, looking looking to the far side. Lofts it up, 
has B.J. Barnes in his sights. It is going to be picked off by Conley, and that's going to do it. 30 seconds to play in the game, and the uh, Zebras turn the ball over, and Conley and the Vikings will take over at their own 40. The Rochester Ford Lincoln postgame show coming up after this one. Also, we're going to name an RTC Communications player of the game. So hang with us for us uh, for that. Uh, Sean Kelly will join us here in the postgame show for an interview as well. So, do you give it to Conley, or do you finally take? A I knee? think you finally take a <laughs> knee. Conley or Tri Tripedi grabs a snap, and that's going to do it. The final tonight from Rochester. The Vikings defeat the Rochester Zebras after coming back from 14 points down to win 33-34 to 14. Post game show coming up next. You're listening to Zebra Football on Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4.